Is this another false ending? I think it's real this time. Whore Popping by the Eagles of Death Metal, a band that keeps being called a metal band on the news all weekend long. That's the concert that the, the kids in Paris were out. And I always remember the day Chris Stanley brought that song into me. He was just a young intern. Still wet behind his ears, and he's like, "You want to?" He goes, uh, "I got a great opening song. It's the he goes the death metal." And I'm like, "Dude, I don't want to know any death metal to start the show." And he's like, "It's the Eagles of death metal." <laughs> like, I still don't know what you get mean. it. But uh, there were pictures in the paper today that were taken from the stage moments before it happened. All the kids just. You know, excited, having fun, and then all that shit went down in Paris. Um, so another, you know, shitty weekend for the planet Earth. I'm uh, not sure what we can do about it either. Yeah, it's I mean, one of those things. But I think that, you know, I think what was especially heartbreaking about it is that it was people out um celebrating life and music and gathering together and in the same way that on 9-11 we just kept thinking these people were just going to work right or the sandy hook kids were just going to school it had that same feeling but it was a different uh perspective on it where it was people just enjoying life and being out at night so many young people people in their 20s 30s out um and just celebrating just yeah doing what everybody wants to do on the weekend and uh yeah, you're right. That's one of the things that uh, gets people like your imagination works when something like that comes up. You're like, wait, I do that. I go to restaurants. I go to to uh, sporting events. I go to concerts. Uh, and that's what they do. That's that's the whole fear behind the terror thing. Although I watched a lot of uh, talking head TV and they're going, it's time we got serious about you know, eradicating these guys. I'm like, uh, weren't we even saying that in 2000? I mean, we're, you know, 15 years into this gimmick. Yeah. And people were acting like, oh, I'm just going to repeat and re-say, you know. And it's one of those things. This isn't an actual army out there, right? It's basically, those fucking idiots were like seven or eight fucking Columbine kids together, you know. Right. And, and, and that makes it so hard to... I think, see it as a, a target or a war because yeah. it, it's not. It's something different. Well, I saw people on TV and they're like, we have to stop worrying about collateral damage when we bomb. That's our biggest problem. And I'm like, if you would have just said this eight hours earlier, everybody would have called you a lunatic. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and you know, once it came up, nobody was saying, dude, what are you talking about? People were just like, maybe. I don't know. You know, because that's how you feel when shit like this comes down you of know? course it's it's so hard to um react the way you would normally react when somebody proposes an idea to you right um the emotion was so yeah, raw you, you can't be intellectual about it or yeah. you can't even you just you're stuck there it was this is uh going on um yeah no idea no idea if this will ever end ever yeah or how many sleeper cells are out there, how many ridiculous times we have to go through this. Um, and now it seems like any one lunatic or any two lunatics can go out and do really fucking scary shit anytime they want. Uh, and we saw it in Canada, and we saw it in, you know, down in Louisiana in a movie theater, and it's it's just, it's almost like it's a war against crazy fucking people yeah you know just exactly. ridiculous crazy people because who thinks this way like when they took hostages the police surrounded the place to you know to do this negotiation and then they were going like what's the, they're just shooting hostages there was no oh here's our demands this is what we want you know they don't want fucking prisoners free or whatever they're just fucking crazy yeah just crazy. Um, but, you know, life uh, was going on in this country. Big sports weekend, big New York comedy festival weekend. It's like, as weird as it feels, like when something like that goes down and they go, this changes everything. 
Mm, it really doesn't. You know, just uh, some time goes past. People put up their lights or whatever that i don't know how fast the guy got out that logo that went everywhere it was crazy yeah it was uh an artist he's a french artist and um he instagrammed um just he's an illustrator so he just drew up that image that was like the peace sign with the eiffel tower very uh simple and by morning it was everywhere it was everybody you knew had pictures of it people on the streets were all right let me just be cynical here you don't think he already had that in advance. I mean, did he really come up with it that quick? Or did is that something maybe he thought of after the have no thing or whatever? Right. It's possible because it was very quick. That was in his bag of tricks. This is why I wish that I was on, like I was Brian Williams. I would have said, uh, I don't know if anybody came up with that that fast. That's really good. I mean, I know whenever we try to do a logo, it takes forever and then we quit. Right, it's true. They always give us the same thing: two bees back to back. Like what? <laughs> now it looks like a butterfly. I get it, BB? Yeah, what? I get it, but why? Bennington. So, however, we're going to say I- I'm open to ideas. Eight four four rock dog. Eight four four rock dog. God. Uh oh yeah, rock god. <laughs> it's raw dog that we're on. Yes, rock god. Man, well, it's a new number. You know, these things, Chris, these things are going to happen. It's a new number. It's okay. Joe, it's a new number. Yeah. It's going to have a mistake mistake like that. It's Rock God. Um, 844-ROCK God, 844-ROCK God. Uh, As soon as I hear a good idea, I'm going to be on board with it because I don't want this to happen anymore. You know? I'm just done with it. Seriously. And, you know, uh, you know, they, they tell you this when you're a kid but you don't believe them. Life is incredibly fast. There's only so many summers that you get. You think that we would just be enjoying the shit out of life. You know what I mean? You'd just be like, I let's just do this now. You know, uh, did you see the guy? Uh, it's up on the eye bank. The guy who rode down the street with his piano and he played Imagine and yeah. that went all over the world. And I'm yelling at my TV. By the way, the guy who wrote that song was fucking murdered by a crazy person. Yes. As he was going into his home, a crazy person walked up and shot him. Crazy is our fucking problem. Yes. It's us against crazy. We're basically like Commissioner Gordon in Gotham right now. We don't know how to stop the crazies. We need an Arkham Asylum. You need a place for the criminally insane. I'm starting to believe that's the planet Earth. And just some of us happen to be here um, you know, locked in with the rest of them. Right. We're locked in with them. Wait, that's the wrong comic book movie. Note to <laughs> self. Start new sci-fi novel. Prison Planet. <laughs> I want it to be more insane now. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny. <laughs> I'll say shit, god damn. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed to do about this. I know I gotta fix it. Yeah, it's up to us. Do walls help? I mean, I know it seems to be helping for Trump. He's gonna I'm going to build a wall around myself. <laughs> well, personal wall. And yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have a personal wall to keep the crazies out. I'll just pick it up and carry it with me wherever I go. Everyone, get your personal wall. Why does everyone have that one? Is that a teacher? <laughs> everyone Everybody? wants one. Everyone who wants a personal wall. Children, personal wall day. Line up. Walls up. By height. Um... Also up on the eye bang, and this is uh, stunning today. The Miley Cyrus uh, with what's your idol's name, Chris? Terry Uncle Terry Richardson. <laughs> uh, he's got uh, new Miley Cyrus. First of all, let me just say this: this fucking kid can never do anything wrong. She's like Donald Trump, where you're like, oh, oh, this is going to cost her a career. <laughs> nope. Nope. So what's the uh, the, the the picture that's up, what does it say on her little onesie that she's wearing? <laughs> she's got a onesie. A baby onesie. And it says, my pussy, my choice, with hearts around the pussy. Um, The word pussy, not her pussy. And she's just camel towing it out. Oh, yeah. yeah, she's showing that off. It's a complete camel toe. And you're like, uh-oh, this is going to set her career back. Nope. People loving it. Like her loving more. It. Like her more now with the My Pussy, My Choice. Uh, I love it. I saw her in a movie where she came out and sang, uh, I don't know, was it Wrecking Ball? Yeah, it was Wrecking Ball. And in the room, 
the fucking place started rocking. Like people were like, yeah, came like the, the big fucking hook. <laughs> they were so fucking happy to hear Wrecking Ball. And I was just kind of looking around the room and I'm like, yeah, I guess it's a catchy tune. But it is. They're acting like it's the best thing that's ever happened to the planet Earth. Yeah. When that Wrecking Ball video came out, I was like five seconds into it being like, oh, boy, another weird Miley set. And then 30 seconds in, I'm like, I'm Came in like a wrecking ball, and it's my pussy, my choice. To look at my little camel toe. <laughs> well, I will tell you this though, because I saw her at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing. I forget who she came out and sang with. Somebody like fucking great. Mm -hmm. She has no fear, zero fear. She's the most confident kid I ever seen. Absolutely. I mean, you could get that from her um her SNL performances. You know, like um. The number she did on SNL, what was that, a couple weeks ago, that you could tell it was going to be one of those things. People were like, this is weird and I don't like it. And right. she was like fully committed. Like, yeah, no problem yeah. whatsoever. There, If you click through the site, uh, through the um, slideshow, there's actually a full frontal in it as well. My yes. favorite one, though is when she's dressed as a cop and she's topless and the titties are out and she's like sucking off the black <laughs> the, uh, nightstick. <laughs> Nothing Why are you going to point out fucking color yeah. there? Every nightstick <laughs> is black, Chris. The black nightstick? Every nightstick <laughs> is black. Have you seen a white nightstick? <laughs> it's I'd love to, though. <laughs> best, it's actually best a pretty good band name, though. Did you watch uh, SNL the other night when they did the cold opening and she just walked out and said it was French. Yes. And I went to Twitter and went, not funny, you know, because... <laughs> be funnier. The, be funnier. This bit blows. <laughs> Saturday Night Dad. <laughs> you know, whatever the things that people do. SND's on again. Who was the little host that night? Oh, um... Uh, the she's, blonde, yeah. Oh, Elizabeth Banks. Yeah, Banks. She's so pretty. She yeah. is, yeah. But she doesn't give off any kind of sexual vibe at all. Yeah, I would agree with that. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. I but she but there is something sexy about her. No, because she's gorgeous. Yes. She's fucking unbelievably gorgeous. And she was in here, uh you know, I did a little interview with her one day, I forget what the fuck was coming out, Glee or some shit. And she's like, I'm a tomboy and I just like climbing trees and I'm like, I fucking believe you, dude. Yeah. yeah I got it. <laughs> I'm fucking picking up on that. That's your look. <laughs> yeah. Just, that's just her whole vibe. You're a hot tomboy. Let's go hang out. She came on like a wrecking ball. My pussy, my choice. Right. Chris, did you get that uh, French interview that I did that they were going crazy for a weekend? Yes, Johnny Halliday. From what I understand, they were going batshit looking for it. They yes. did not realize that we were the ones who did it. Yeah, 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 they they were yeah they were losing it. They were. I got yeah. multiple emails and phone calls and text messages. Big big wigs win it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the biggest of the wigs. No one knows what to do when something like this happens. You want to do something nice. Yeah. Stephen Colbert did a thing after his show, and right. said, and nothing quite comes across in that moment. You know, one thing because they're locked into being a comedy TV show. There's not much you could do if you work in radio. You could just go, "Hey, we're blowing that off. And we're doing this kind of radio today," and no one gets mad at you. But on TV, you just can't go. Look, instead of doing Saturday Night Live, let's just start talking about this, dudes. <laughs> right. Let's see what you want to do. But, the, and yet, it, it feels impossible to not address it in any way. Like yeah, you, you look to. like an animal no matter what you do. Because, like with Stephen Colbert, some people are like, he faked his tears. I'm like, I don't know that. Yeah, I mean, at that point, I think it was very new. It had just happened, too. Right. Like, he didn't have all the information at that point. I think he looked like a dude who's really in shock and didn't really know what to say. And then Undateable canceled their uh, show for that night, right? <coughs> and they posed with that... Uh, with the symbol, yeah. Yeah, with the symbol. They were on that Peace symbol quick. Yeah. Then it was only a couple hours after it happened. That artist had that for something else that happened, and he just had it like in, in his, on his computer, does, and he's like, this is a perfect... Does that make it worse for you? Or does yeah. That <laughs> Like, it would be more impressive if he was so overcome with emotion that Chris, he just. Yeah. Why are you so locked into something that was just a thought of mine a little while ago, and now you forgot <laughs> where you heard it? You thought it was an inner <laughs> voice, and you're taking it and running with it. He calls it his Ron voice. I know, and that's what happened an inner Ron. now with his Jenny Hutt hysteria. That he's so angry now that we've dropped it. Yeah, um, it's on with me and Jenny Hutt or Jenny Butt. <laughs> 
Jenny, pee in my butt. Oh my oh god. god. No, no, Chris, this is so child childish. Not one of those were yours. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing was yours. They're sticking to her though. Uh, you guys were at Dan's uh, Hindsight show. How'd that go? Yes, it was so much fun. I was there with Chris and with Joe, and it was a blast. It was an amazing evening. Really funny. I saw you guys scoping, and I saw like an, a little Asian comic that you were ignoring, Chris. I was getting mad at you. I'm like, you have a comic that's trying to be part of this. Uh, Dan, do you, can you make your announcement yet about Hindsight, or you're holding that? Oh, no, we can announce that it's going to be now um, a monthly show at Caroline's. He's a monster. Oh, right. Yeah. He's a monster. There you go. Dan is a goddamn monster. It's very exciting. It's so awesome. It was a blast, too. It was a lot of fun, and it was uh, packed out the room. And what day is it going to be on? Well, we're not sure of the dates yet. We're going to get the exact date. Right, this works out. Caroline's is in my barrel, so I'll be able to come to work. <laughs> I don't like... Uh, going over the bridges into another barrel. What am I doing over here? Yes. I feel like I'm losing my money. But I heard a rumor from some people, and I actually I told this to Big J before. Someone was telling me that there's a train that runs under a river, and you can get there. Yeah. But yeah. how yep. can a train go under a river? What is this? Fucking Hogwarts? <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy talk. <laughs> it can't happen. And yet people swear to it. There's some kind of magical train that instead of going over the river, or you don't get into a boat, but it goes under a river. And I was thinking, do rivers have bottoms, or do they just keep going down? You know, I would have I would have sworn it was real, but when you say it like that, now I'm Thank questioning you. if it even happens. Seriously, that's magic shit. All aboard! <laughs> My friend wrote it once, but he's notorious for embellishing stories, so I never believe Is him. Is the friend you, Joe? Because it, you're a liar. It was me. Now, uh, Dan, I heard it went fantastic, but I heard you were somewhat concerned before because of a member of this show... Um, <laughs> who yeah. <laughs> was doing his blazing show somewhat of a concern i spoke to dan yeah and he was very excited that we were all coming right but then he very like gently would slip in and um you know chris is gonna be uh have right he's gonna he's gonna be normal and i'm like what do you mean dude yeah we're all why do you want that <laughs> reputation chris why are you laughing because it's true, Chris. If I heard this, if if I heard Dan say, Ron's not going to ruin my show, is he? I would be fucking devastated. I would not be laughing. I'd be like, Dan, how dare you? I know how to act in society. Also, on top of that, not only did that, in a separate conversation a little bit later, he had to slip in. Um, And he knows he can't just start periscoping during the show. And that one I actually Come had to be on. like, you know what? I'm going to talk to him about it. Because that one I could not guarantee. Chris, yeah. I could not you're, guarantee that one. You're Granny from the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> and he's the fucking pretty blonde daughter, Ellie Mae. And he doesn't want any of his friends to yes. see where he comes from. And that was embarrassing for me and Joe. She yeah. felt like that we had the reputation of like somebody's shitty backwoods family. He's just like, we heard you do comedy shows. That's our Dan up there. This is unbelievable. <laughs> He he only he only chimed in once and it was it was it was at the right time. It was not he wasn't off the grid. I was worried though because he was the first person to chime in. As soon as they went to the audience, Chris immediately started up and I was like, I promised Dan something that I could not keep. <laughs> and here we go. Like What I, were you what was he yelling about? They opened questions to the audience. Oh, and that's guess fine. Who was the right. first one who, but I. They asked the so, question. I was like, "Yeah, just agree to it." <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention to the question. I, I noticed because you started to immediately make up your answer as you were talking, and I could see it <laughs> in your face. <laughs> I like movies. I think that's what he said. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. We, we were asking if, uh, what was it? Oh, if the, you have been dating someone, and because of one thing they said you lost interest in them and chris said that he lost interest in somebody so they didn't like rushmore so i was like screw it i'm not dating you anymore but right, i watched a- him make it up he's <laughs> like yeah that happened to me and they're like what was it? and he's like well that thing was the person didn't like a movie 
called Rushmore. Rushmore. It was so like that. <laughs> you just have to talk, you idiot. And he didn't have a microphone, and somehow he was louder than them. That's all I kept realizing is how loud he's able to be without being mic'd up. So then we we told him, "Hey, Chris, you can't can't." Tackle, say anything. So he kept the comments to himself, to like the immediate people around him. And then I also heard that he was nodding his head when the question came up: Have you ever jacked off at work? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. some of your fucking coworkers were not happy about Me. your enthusiasm. <laughs> well, Immediately, I was, I was trying to hide that fact. That was you. He's, he I did have to like, hold my tongue at times. He started nodding, and I just whipped around and looked at him like, dude, oh, yeah, big time. That is embarrassing, dude. First of all, I'm embarrassed that that you have a reputation that Dan had to be concerned about his gig. He's like, the Caroline people are here. I could be doing a monthly. I didn't know they were going to be there. I was just trying to have fun and support my coworker and friend. You know, let me just say this about Dan. He's like that NASA monkey in 1963. I mean, he's he's just being <laughs> yeah. shot into space. Everything, every time we turn around, something big is happening for Dan. It's huge. It was, it was no, it was really exciting, and I was super glad and uh, happy you guys came out because it really went awesome. I couldn't have like expected it to go better. Who won the uh, New York's funniest? Was it one, one of our guys? It was like, Matt Pavich who was in all here. Right. All right. Yes. Yes. We got an in. <laughs> How's that shit? God damn. I'm a man. Can you just stop at a man? I'm a man. <laughs> uh, that's great, man. Uh, yeah, no, Pavage is a good guy. Congratulated for him. Everyone, uh, apparently he crushed. I was hearing, so yeah. I heard a couple awesome. of them crushed. Yeah, I heard DeVito crushed, and I heard that Charles Gould had a great... And I heard uh, Nimesh, who was in on Monday. Right. Yeah, I heard he, he destroyed. Funny. Yeah, I heard that from people, too. Yeah, DeVito was... T- I texted DeVito. I was like, how's it going? And he was like, I think Nimesh is going to win, because he just demolished. I guess they figured he couldn't win so close to what happened, you know? Makes sense. They took yeah. it maybe. They didn't want people to start booing, even though minutes before they were rolling in the aisles <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Now, boo. How is this possible? Yeah. My theory didn't make any sense at all. Boo! <laughs> um, I can't believe Dan doesn't trust me. And I was great. I was great in the audience. No, he was better, way better than expected, and I'm sorry I doubted him. Really? Well, I'm, I'm glad fair. I ran it by you just to make sure. I think it was fair. Well, first of all, you didn't doubt him on the air, so you never had to say that. <laughs> But then I did you have never to leave- had to bring it up. Off the air, you're like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. With you. This is a real roll of the dice. And why? Now that you're out and people say who hurt your feelings and why the other day too. One of those comics. Oh, just one of one of the comics on it said uh, that. When when you were asking like oh you know Dan right funny guy and it just came back with like oh yeah nice guy a uh, good writer which I thought was kind of like a diminishing <laughs> no, you would not imagine that somebody would be angry that they called you a good writer no, but I Dan be, was I would I would be so happy if someone said this that motherfucker in here was losing his shit he was, was he so pissed. Because it's not just because you you were saying like because you were just trying to like egg on and have fun. And yeah, like I was mess- trying to get in a ball busting session actually. Sure, right. Ex- I thought he would say something like, "Dan, he's fucking terrible," and then we'd all have a good laugh because it's not true. <laughs> right, which I would have had fun with that, yeah. but it was almost a kind of like because you're like, "Well, no one said the word funny," and he was like, "Well, I, I mean, I said good writer." And you, it just you very guys ever watch? Like that, uh, which- <laughs> You guys ever watch Million Dollar Listing, uh, New York? Yes, I have seen that. Uh, the one of the guys just went by, the kind of foreign guy who kicks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. the guy who kicks? He just walked by you just then. Well, there you have it. Mm-hmm. Everything's <laughs> happening here. It's a pretty big day. I should ask them for some real estate advice. It looks like somebody's going to be singing down here, and we're not even allowed to say it. But it's yeah, huge. Really? I'm going to write, you don't know, Joe? I No, I don't know. Do you know? I do I'm going to write it down for you. Okay. Then. Get ready oh, to there you. he is, right there. Goddamn mind blown. Oh, yeah. Joey Jojo. What's his oh, name on what? that show? Well, it's his real know. name. <laughs> it's like some... Do not say it aloud. Wow. That's big. That's huge. It's a big one. That guy's name is Josh? Josh Flagg? No, it isn't. You Can't idiot. Be. Madison Hildebrand? No. 
It's Manhattan, not fucking L.A. You're reading the wrong fucking things. Also, that second name sounded made up. This is why you can't be near a computer. <laughs> Anything that you give out is false information. Ryan Serhant? No. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> He's like a Swedish guy. Frederick yes. Eklund. Yeah, that's him. Frederick. Oh, Freddy. Fred. Freddy's in the house. He sells a lot of fucking real estate, my friend. A lot of real estate. Who you got on the phone today? That is Jam Band. Well, he's written up some dopey stuff. He called Davy Mac Daisy. <laughs> and then the lines <laughs> fell out. Cute name, though. Yeah, it doesn't make fucking sense. I'll say shit. God damn. Oh, well, they all got out. The Eagles of Death Metal got out. But yeah. the last I heard, they didn't know about their crew. That was Friday night. Yeah, well, their merch their merch guy passed away. Oh, yeah. no, because yeah. he was out front. Exactly, yeah. And uh, um, I heard that he was actually had even toured with, like, Cat Stevens. Like, I think Cat Stevens is... He had been, you know, with a lot of bands. And, yeah, yeah, with a lot of bands before and was, like, a really well-liked guy and, you know... Pretty sad, dude. Uh, it's terrible. Yeah. It's absolutely every, every story that you hear out there is just uh, so many young people. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, of course. They said it was like the Williamsburg of Paris. It's where the young people go to party. Um, uh, forget it. Uh, as, as soon as I get into it, it all comes right back. It just drives me crazy. I'm gonna fix it somehow. I don't know how though. You're gonna need help though. I don't know. Maybe I can come up with it. I know a lot of I, this actually knocked it off the uh, off the headlines of the papers. The farce and that is Ronda Rousey was finally fucking exposed. So maybe now we can no longer hear how she could beat up male boxers and how she's going to be the champion for another 50 years. The greatest pound for pound fighter in the world. You mean that Ronda Rousey? Yeah. Who got blown up after, I don't know, a minute and a half and literally tried to box someone who was a boxer and got beat the fuck up. It was real. It was insane. Believed her own hype. Yeah, she fucking. She was driving her own goddamn hype train. She got destroyed. I mean, and then her trainer telling her, "You're doing beautiful work." In the in between rounds, when everyone knew it was fucking over, the amount of money people lost in that fucking fight is or insane. Or maybe her trainer won, won quite a bit of money. I think this is the same way Creed's going to go. The fucking movie Creed. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll excuse me for this, but I don't like this kind of fighting. I just, to see someone laying on their back and be pounded, it just yeah, that, fucking work for me. That really bugs me. I, I mean, know people I, love it, but it just does not feel like a sport to me. Yeah, like, I really enjoy watching boxing, and of course, it can get pretty brutal at times, right. but there was something about her getting kicked in the face, knocked out, and then, like, without hesitation, like, what type of personality does that, and then immediately, like, hops on top and, like, Ruthlessly was overhand just... fucking slams of her fucking fist into yeah. Rousey's face. She got like two or three in before they stopped the fight. But... Yeah. And then watching Rousey like afterwards, just like crying and freaked out with like seven people around. I was like, Jesus. Yeah, it was really intense. Well, because she knows she just lost her fucking movie. That shitty fucking Roadhouse reboot that she's going to do. Everything's this gone now. This whole fucking thing can finally end. It's well, just... We... Got to hear about her constantly. What a great fucking fighter she is. She's not. She's just a human. She got boxed. That's the way all these UFC guys are in for what three fights and then yeah, they're gone. No one has any lasting power. At least like you know, as a champion, they all yeah, right. they all get knocked out. Every, everyone who's a guaranteed badass gets fucked up because I think to the to the teal, all of them just like I don't know. They get the belt and they start coasting. I don't think so. I or, think that this is just a fucking street fight. Yeah, exactly. Since something fucking happens in a street fight. Just because you're a human being. Because right. if you get clipped in the face by, uh, you know, a foot going at that speed, it's with over. that much power, there's nothing a person can do. It's just like, you can't be a good fighter in that moment. And why do these all these things have to come on in the middle of the night? Everyone's saying to me, the other night, I'm so exhausted, but I'm waiting for the fight. I'm like, yeah, why? Midnight. Every every fight it starts at midnight. I guess because boxing was doing it. So now every every fight every fight is it for the West Coast? 
I guess. I mean, it's, it's just always how they time out for every. The undercard ends at eleven thirty for no matter what it is. Well, good. Uh, no one will ever need to say the fucking name and what a great fighter she is and how she could fucking beat Pacquiao or whatever. Mayweather. Mayweather was the Mayweather, big thing. Mayweather, Pacquiao, the same fucking everybody. Because Mayweather would talk shit to her like on social media, and yeah. it's like, no, I fuck you up. Well, no, she can't. She would not fuck him up. No. She got beat up by a like a thirty eight year old kickboxer. And like, now fucking uh, the what do you call it thing is over as well. The fucking Roadhouse reboot is done. <laughs> Cancelled. Yeah. Thank God. Which I think was going to do just as well as Entourage. <laughs> I think it was going to be right up there. <laughs> Turtle could have been in that one. Well, maybe they'll start up with the same shit with this, I, this I other chick because she was unde- she's undefeated as well. Oh, she's three and zero oh or something. Yeah. Like. So there, maybe it'll just start. My favorite thing is this chick looks so brutal the way she kicks her. She hops on top of her. But then when she realizes she won, she turns back into a girl. She has that like very like, Yay! she has like a little skip. <laughs> like, it was pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> Thomas in Kansas. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Yeah. Um, there's going to be quite a bit of stuff coming out on Ronda Rousey. I heard within, I think, four days ago, her her training coach filed for bankruptcy and her mom's like, trashing the guy on social media so i don't know trashing him for what i i don't know just saying i don't know this is secondhand information but it is legit i mean you have to do a little more research on it yeah i don't think any of it uh they're basically saying the trainer was all is you know, all messed up, wasn't doing a good job of training Rousey, and then the Rousey's mother was like, "This guy's a fucking mess." Yeah, but if she's such a fucking Terminator, it shouldn't have fucking mattered. You know what I mean? She should have felt the fucking thing going in the wrong direction. She did, I, and she panicked, and she got beat the fuck up. And every UFC champion seems to be like like there was like Chuck Liddell or like. Bones Jones. Oh, the, remember we had to hear about the backyard guy for a while. Kimbo Slice. Kimbo Slice. Yeah, just like, oh, I'm yeah. not fucking paying attention to this shit. And they're all sold as the most dangerous man alive. I forgot about Kimbo Slice. Everybody was just talking about Kimbo Slice constantly. I don't think this thing is a sport. I think it's something else. I think it's just a fucking bar fight. They should just call this bar fights. You have to drink. You never know when the fight's going to start. You just have to keep drinking the whole time. And then when a fucking bell goes off, you're just going to start swinging. Um, hey, what's up, Red? You're not Boston. You're not in your Boston. You're not a Boston anymore. It's Polly. Why wouldn't you put him up as Polly? Wouldn't that be the fucking thing to do? You're like, here's Polly. Um, here's, uh, well, we're two days away. We haven't even thought about this yet. Hard Rock Johnny, Wednesday Boys. night, the big Thanksgiving show. Boys, girls, what's happening? What's up? What's up with you, dude? You know, living the dream, counting down the fucking minutes until I get to have Thanksgiving early. I don't know if I'm going to be there. Damn. He's not sure yet. He's not sure he's up Wednesday is my TV night. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to watch your program. Yeah, I got my shows. Come on, he likes so his, much fun. He likes his stories. They're so good, and they, you know, I just sit there with my cats and we watch <laughs> different shows. This says, uh, "You're a you're a UFC guy or an MMA guy or whatever this is." Yeah, sure. Were you? Uh, you know, I said to somebody the other day, I go, "Ronda Rousey's going down," and I said it as a joke, and now. And I said at the coffee shop. Yeah. Now I'm like the fucking guy who knows <laughs> shit. I'm like, why didn't I say it on the air? You know what I mean? If I would have said that on the air, everybody would be fucking falling for it today. I may have won a few dollars on that fight. Small really? dollars. Yeah. These boxers are, it's a different kind of thing. Um, you know, here's the, you know, Mike Tyson said a long time ago, you always have a plan until you get punched in the fucking face. And that's exactly what Holm did. She just punched Ronda Rousey right in the face. And I don't think anyone's ever done that to Ronda Rousey. And, and it was just, if you watched it, after that first round, she went back and sat down. And she looked like she was kind of, she was confused. She was hurt. And she was totally out of breath. Well, yeah. And, just, um, and you remember this when you were in fights when you were a kid. You get punched right on the fucking nose. Oh, it hurts. You can't, first of all, it hurts. And then you also can't think of what to do. Like, before you know it, you're fucking taking your shoes off for a second. <laughs> you don't know what the fuck is going on. Your brain you, doesn't work. 
when when she got knocked out, I mean, that kick to the side of the head slash neck, when she went down and then she jumped on her, and you watch Holly Holmes kind of held up a little bit because I think she knew. She hammer-fisted like three times. The first one connected. The other two, she, she let up. And if they didn't really show it, but Herb Dean, who's the ref, grabbed Ronda Rousey because her right arm started coming up, which is called a fencer's reaction. When you get knocked out really badly, your arms, if you, there, there's compilations of it all over the Internet. When you get knocked out cold, your arms go up. It's just this weird reaction that your body has. And you could see him. He grabs her arm and kind of puts it down to kind of savor the embarrassment of looking like she totally knocked the fuck out. It's it just doesn't mean shit to me. It's just stupid. Well, it's kind of, you know, it's, I just, the, I, I thought it was a good fight and it was good to watch. I mean, a lot of people are coming out hating on poor Ronda Rousey, but. She did to herself. Know, fuck her. She did she to did herself. Seriously, fuck her and all the bullshit hype around her all this time. She's fucking saying she could beat Holofield. She's out of her <laughs> fucking mind and she bought into it all. She bought into the hype machine. She thought she was just going to run across the ring and it would be like every other fight she's had. Oh, she'll fucking submit her or knock her the fuck out. It's like when you meet a wrestler who falls for his own gimmick and he stops acting like himself. <laughs> start acting like his gimmick. That's what she was doing. She was just in a movie beating up Turtle. From fucking entourage. Turtle could destroy her in a fight. She thought she was fighting Turtle. That was weird. It's but you know you kind of have to though when you're at that level of competition whether you're it isn't competition it's a bar fight okay well, so when you're at that level of bar fighting you have to believe that you're the best because you you cannot have because you know Holly Holm went into that saying I'm gonna beat the shit out of Ronda Rousey and and you have to believe that it's no than any other athlete you know Michael Jordan every day woke up when he was playing said I'm the goddamn best yeah, but he fucking backed world. it up he wasn't a fucking make believe hype machine. This girl was fighting for eight seconds at a time, and she finally got no, an actual fucking fight. It was over. She had no conditioning. She None. couldn't do it. She, she was blowing the fuck. And like, she was always getting mad because people were calling her fat on the fucking internet. But well, Rousey. Yeah. When, you, when you're when you not in cardio shape, you can't go a couple minutes. If, if, if you want to know how out of shape you are, put on gloves. And start hitting a bag. Yeah. And fucking 45 seconds later, you're fucking... You just... <laughs> yeah. Oh, it fuck. Tiring. <laughs> I box twice a week. And I, I hit a heavy bag. I do five, I do 30 minutes of, of heavy bag work a week. Oh. Twice. And it is... It will blow you up. It is really tough. And when she sat down on that stool, she looked out of breath, out of shape, and kind of fat. Now, I did so see... Thank you for that. Johnny in the squared circle before boxing. Yeah, that was a lot. That was horrible. <laughs> that was, don't even bring that up. That yeah. was bad. I'm just going to say this. At one point, he was on his hands and knees. <laughs> I was. I got knocked out. I got knocked out three times in that one fight. <laughs> and he had to. It was the thing where he has his fucking mouthpieces hanging out. <laughs> oh, no. down. <laughs> but before that was funny because we were in like a tent and he's in the back room. This was just. Me putting on fucking amateur fights. Right. So he's in the back, and he starts punching the tent. And who was walking by the tent? <laughs> My poor hit said he right in the head. <laughs> ah! Fucking <laughs> comes, he's on the other side of the tent. Ah! Fucking well, smacks him hey! He was fucking furious. He got punched through a tent. <laughs> Missed three days of work. <laughs> that was, I think that was also the night, was that the night that, that Al left in the ambulance? Yeah, Al left in the ambulance. This is how fucking animalistic the New York audience was. <clears throat> so he has the flu, right? I mean, he has a terrible flu. <laughs> He's supposed to fight Earl for, I forget what Earl would lose, diploma. but. It was uh, a diploma. Yeah, he would get his master's degree ripped up in the middle of the ring, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> fucking, Al has nothing, and he's laying in the back, and they're giving him fluids, and I lean over him, and he's like white, and he can't see, and I go, Al, you're fighting. We have, you know, all these fucking people here. You're going to be in this fight. So he goes out, he gets fucked up by Earl. Earl rips... And this fucking guy is like le just so sick and beat up. And Earl's ripping up his fucking master's degree <laughs> in the middle of the ring. Then they put Al in the fucking uh, ambulance. The listeners surround it. They start rocking it as, oh they're, my God. as they're chanting faggot. Faggot. Oh my God. <laughs> so then I got fucking. Uh, 
uh, I got Billy Staples. I had sold him in a Digstown challenge. <laughs> he will fight ten people, okay. one round each, <laughs> in one night, right? Okay. Because who doesn't love the movie Digstown? <laughs> it's got the great fucking James Wood and the even better Oliver Platt. So fucking Billy's out there, and he's fucking lasting. We get to like the sixth or seventh guy, and this fucking guy hits him on the fucking bean. And the arms are out, like he's talking about. It. He's fucking <laughs> laying in the middle. So everyone's going crazy, and I go like this. Ring the bell. And uh, they just start ringing the bell, and I go, ladies and gentlemen, the judges. And I'm pointing <laughs> at, just off into the distance. <laughs> have told me he went the full minute. He, Billy Staples is the winner. People are booing and <laughs> throwing shit. And I'm looking at imaginary people yelling, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> you're telling me that this fight goes on. The Digstown Challenge goes on. <laughs> and it really did stick with the movie because it was just fucking lies throughout that whole movie. <laughs> it was a fucking great night. Great night, man. Not, not unless you got knocked out three times. It wasn't that great. Well, you know what? I might let people punch you on Wednesday. Uh, That's Jenny. fine. I could, I could take more of it. That was, you know, before my I got svelter and in better shape. And but this was the other thing. Johnny was just like, "Hey, I'll fight anybody. I don't care." He's on I the care. air. Saying, you guys I don't sound know. like some <laughs> six foot five like monster that just came out swinging. Like he didn't have a box. He was just throwing punches and he hit you with haymakers. Head. But then the funny thing was to see the look of pride on his face as he put his arm around his girl and they go walking off in the <laughs> night. You did it, and baby. I, yeah. I had to leave with I had to leave with Eddie Trunk. <laughs> he was my corner man and didn't even show up on time. Yeah. Bah. Yeah. Well there was a rock show somewhere on the yeah. planet Earth. Mm -hmm. He was very uh very much involved <coughs> in this uh the the internet tweeting of, of uh you know, the metal band that was playing in Paris. If you follow his Twitter, it was pretty good. Now, what's the fight that you're having with Edwin Escobar about on Twitter? Who? Oh, I don't have any fights on Twitter. Oh, somebody's saying that. I don't know why people... You know how much I miss heavyweight boxing? Her Rick Johnny is annoying me. That's how much uh, that does. Is that why her? are we fucking hearing from these people? Well, there's only one person I have a feud with on Twitter, and I'm not going to say it. Say it. You're allowed to say it. Do it, dude. Jenny Hutt and her producer. Oh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that's been put in the past now. Uh-uh. We're all moving Not on. with me, because this is a goddamn attack on me, this Jenny Hutt thing. Because <laughs> that's what it is. It's a thing. I can't even give a goddamn name to it. Or maybe a scope slash producer war. That could be it. We should be thinking about love and unity right now, Chris. Not you with should, Jenny Hutt. You should box Jenny Hutt, Chris. Let's go, Hutt. producer. Two on one. Good. It's a fucking triple threat, dog. <laughs> that a triple no threat. way. No, no that's going to happen. And Never. I, I'm not even happy that you're talking about this thing is dropped. It's over. Um, all right, Johnny. See you guys on Wednesday. Uh, Big J just texted me and said he would love for me to come on to one of his big shows that he's shooting for NBC. But then this makes me feel bad because it's like, he goes, I'd love for you to check it out, but I understand if you can't. Thanks for all your help. I can never say that enough. Because his dad never showed up for anything, and now I never show up for anything. Yeah, you don't want that rep. you got to support him like I support Dan. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's your Dan support. I actually Dan is your big J. I had to leave early from that show, but the mm -hmm. first half I did see was fantastic. Um, why did you leave early? To go see Mr. Tom Segura at the sold-out Skirball Center. How was that? Great. Fucking amazing. He destroyed that fucking room. Nice. Segura Tom Segura. Was, oh, I can't say how fucking great his show was. Segura is hysterical. First of all, Tom Segura has never said anything at any time that I didn't find interesting and funny. I never think, oh, there's a silly thing. I go, oh, fuck. That's kind of brilliant. Yeah. I just think he's great. Everything about him. I love when he comes in here. That was great. Last week he came in. He's so yeah. funny. Loved it. And he's going to have a little baby soon. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's going to name that baby Skirball Center. Oh, okay. he did so well that night. Oh, oh little Skirball. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else about him. Uh, you are uh, not going to be the guy who comes back and explains stuff to us in the future. Because okay. just, you know, incredible. It gives us nothing. We get none of the, the sights, the, the, uh, the sounds, the smells, you know what I mean? Like, I wanted to hear everything about the show. 
Uh, Liz says fire says it's not a bar fight. I can get in a bar fight and I'm not in the UFC. Well, let's see you get in a bar fight first, Liz, and then I'll listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> they all last three fucking fights. And it's an ugly thing to see. It's literally an ugly thing. Yeah, it is. And it's- once they get knocked out, once they lose that belt, they don't get it back. Like it's, that's it. They're, they're shot. You broke them. But see the thing. I think boxing is a beautiful sport. I think wrestling is a beautiful sport. Yeah. This. When you see one person dive on top of a fucking person and start pounding them in the face, you've suddenly lowered humanity. I'm sorry. Not every sport is for everybody. Some people hate soccer. Some people hate hockey. I don't even hate this, but I just ignore it. I don't consider it, you know, a sport. It's something else. Yeah. Just reminds me of bum fights or whatever. Yeah, it's kind of like... um you know, and I know they do incredibly well, and I know I have many, many friends who love this and try to talk me out of it. It's just one of those things. It you know, I wasn't raised with it, and it just it just comes across looking ugly to me. This thing that I'm looking at here looks ugly. How much was it to buy this fight? Uh, sixty, sixty-five, yeah, sixty-five, I think. And what did Rousey get paid? One hundred, one hundred and ten dollars. <laughs> I got, I got to see what the purse was. Because I don't ever see anyone driving around and fucking living in mansions like boxers. Oh, they don't get paid that boxer money. Much less. Um, This you'll like, and I think it all ties in. And uh, Johnny from Cobra Kai, uh, the Karate Kid movie, is out lecturing kids not to fucking bully. <laughs> and I'm like, who are you to tell children not to bully, dude? I can't believe he would pass judgment of anyone. Yeah. Because you were the worst. You, you were act- dressed up like a skeleton chasing a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. He gave other bullies inspiration. Like, yes. hey, I could, I could push people around like him. He took a note to put him in a body bag. <laughs> it wasn't his idea, though. I know, but I think he... I think Was it he- his idea to sweep the bad leg? <laughs> Uh, the no. leg was already hurt. <laughs> you know, if it was just... He was sweep- told to sweep the leg, and he yeah. did, I think, is what happened. But say that makes you Camille Rouge at that point, Johnny. You're not thinking for yourself. Now, he did run over to hand the fucking trophy, you know, at the end. He after did kind of yeah. give him respect, and he seemed to be, like, kind of crying a yeah. bit emotional while he did it. <laughs> With his unbelievably <laughs> weird red face. <laughs> he was very strange. But maybe what uh, they were trying to get across is that he was bullied into bullying. He was constantly being told, sweep the leg. Well, they say bullies have been bullied. Right. They do say that. Sometimes bullied at home. Yeah. That's what they say. But a lot of people say that bullies have been bullied, I think, are also bullies. So I don't know whether that's <laughs> Don't. don't I'm just going to give them my money and leave it alone. <laughs> Here's some money, then. And I'm going to have more money tomorrow. So stop hitting everyone. <laughs> just take all the money. Um, I, to me, that kid might have been the perfect fucking heel of all time. Yeah, he had the perfect face for it. No, here's what gets to me, though. All right, you know the fucking good girl in that, right? The one that, that he, like, Ralph Macchio liked. What's her shoe. name? Shoe. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Shoe. Shoe. What kind of fucked up chick is she that she's dating fucking skeleton face Johnny in the first place? Oh, yeah. You've got to think that about most movies where it's yeah. like she's with the bad guy right. and then I get her. It's just like. I got a feeling she a was good, fucking loving it. She's not a good judge of character. She's like this to him. Make sure you uh, paint the skeleton on your cock tonight, too. Because you know how much that fucking turns me on. It's not that she's even a bad judge of character. That's what she wants. She wanted the fucking bad character. Right. She wanted that fucking guy. She's attracted to power. I don't know. The bad girl right there. I mean, that's beyond douche boat. You know what I mean? Like a douche boat I could get. If <laughs> okay. you're with Bradley Cooper, right. yeah. you you're know. You're just with a douche. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just a douche that <laughs> uh, just runs into Vince Vaughn too hard. Yeah. First of all, the fact that Vince Vaughn didn't get up swinging. We're playing fucking touch football. At no time do you fucking blast me. I mean, fucking Vince Vaughn didn't even fucking stretch before that. He just thought it was a family event in the backyard. Right, sure. You know, one of those games is going to be 10 to 9. He didn't know Zach Lunch was right. coming after him. You'd be fucking, you'd have a beer right next to you most of the time. <laughs> Daiquiris. Instead, he gets this fucking Bradley Cooper blasting him. 
like a psycho. He was all jacked up. Um, hey, uh, Dan in Jersey, dead. Hey guys, um, the price. When you have boxing and you have MMA, boxing is like war in the world where you're going to smash the crap out of each other, but there's a few rules. When you have MMA, it's more like terrorism where everything goes all the time and there's no mercy. There's no giving up. There's no white flag. And you got to have violence because that's the way humans are, but it's just weird that it's so popular to have it on TV just beating people to a pulp while they're laying on the ground. Yeah, I mean, and you're right. We do like some kind of violence in our society. Maybe it blows off a little fucking steam. Maybe this MMA is good for society in a way that is like gladiators without anyone being fucking stabbed. But you know the same people who watch MMA would be just as happy as if those dudes had swords or one of those balls with spikes <laughs> on their head swinging it around. They'd have probably the same audience. <laughs> No one would say this shit goes too far. I, I, I don't know about that because then you can't you can't rally behind someone like Rousey for ten wins in a row because you're going to get at least one arm knocked off with a sword eventually. But see, here's the thing: I don't know if she was ever any good. I think that that was just like fucking luck. crazy talk. Being no, it's bumps. the same as when any sport starts to blossom. It's like, wow, this is the greatest ever because it's just coming onto the scene. But and look, you, you follow around. boxing, right? Had yep. you ever saw any definitive like champion get crushed like that in their prime? I mean, this isn't like, oh, she's been hanging around too long. You know, like with Muhammad Ali, she got fucking crushed basically before she would have been thought to peak. She surrounded herself with the wrong people. She did. She got bought in her own hype, and you know you, you like the guy said before. When you don't have you have a plan until you punch in the face. She didn't have a plan. She got caught up in being popular. But when you beat everyone up that surrounds you, I, I would get a little pompous too. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would be like, you guys let me win. Like, I saw that fucking Elvis documentary where he kept flipping his friends, and all those guys were, like, literally his bodyguards. It was their job to beat up people who, and you can see on Elvis's face, he fucking believed that he was flipping red. And, like, there was a crowd <laughs> clapping for him and shit. <laughs> You did it. Yeah. You're so and good. And I mean, you look at Red's fucking knees, you see them bend and go into the leap <laughs> when Elvis fucking grabs them. <laughs> <laughs> he goes into the leap. That wasn't a flip. That was a jump, Elvis. Rousey's the Elvis of UFC. Red, get out here. I'm going to show these girls how to knock people around. <laughs> Come in, Elvis. <laughs> and thanks for that Cadillac. UFC used to be a lot better. Like the the first UFC was like literally like blood sport, whereas it's like a sumo wrestler versus a guy who like does karate, and it was before everyone just did this grappling. And dude, I used to have all those guys on my show down in Florida when it first started. We thought it was fucking ape shit, and then those uh, those Brazilians just tied people up for an hour. The Gracies, like Hoist Gracie. Yeah. I had Gracie's on my show, and we were like, "What is this fucking <laughs> shit? This is be the greatest thing ever." <laughs> It was always a tournament. It was awesome. This is just it, there's like they've injected a lot of like wrestling WWE stuff into it. Like they love these- yeah, except for you don't see anyone go out and get destroyed in the first five fucking seconds. Um, Joe in LA. Hey, Joe. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Hey, so you guys were talking about gladiators and everything. So I don't know who. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, <laughs> we can hear you. Yeah, sorry. You guys were talking about gladiators and everything. So? I don't know if you've gone on YouTube and put in, I don't know what they're called, knights or something, but they've got people in full-on armor and swords beating on each other uh, in, a, in a boxing ring. It's happening. We've already uh, gone back to the dark ages. Remember that movie where they would have guys on um, motorcycles jousting each other? <laughs> I'm trying to think of it. was like a 1980 1980- 1979 uh, movie. And, was uh, that like the Mad Max style? Or? Yeah, but this was like, uh, they were like really fucking going. Night Riders? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Night spelled K N I G H T. Yeah, but this this is crazy. You can find it on YouTube. Um, I don't know if you put in Night in a boxing ring or Sword Fight. Or something. This actually yeah. looks pretty fucking fun. You're thinking <laughs> yeah. of the Renaissance Festival. That's yeah, where those you were. things are great. 
I'm going to get a big fucking leg of turkey. Well, if it's so good, why don't you want it any other day? You know what I mean? How come no one ever says, I want a big leg of turkey until they go one of those things? Because it's the worst meat in the entire yes. turkey. It is. It's for a dog it's to chew on. <laughs> it's the funkiest meat. Peel the skin off. It is. It's the George Clinton of turkey meat. <laughs> Pass me some turkey meat, please, the funkiest that you have. Yes, that's it, me lady. <laughs> <laughs> and how loose is your goose? What are you telling me, Chris? I'm telling you that I have a guest here, Mr. Rufus Wainwright. Don't even fucking say that to me, because I will lose my shit. I'm saying that to you right now, because Let's... he has a new album out of his opera called Prima Donna. It's Ruf Rufus Wainwright's here. This is too much for me Whoa. to even to take in. Rufus Wainwright's here, Ron. All right, let's bring him in. <laughs> That is from the opera Prima Donna. That's, that album is now available in stores and online. Rufus Wainwright, nice to see you, my friend. Hi. Gigantic fan of oh, your work you. forever. Uh, anytime Jay Moore and I get together, we talk about oh, you. Wonderful. You're the only thing <laughs> that we will discuss. Um, I don't know. Has it any other pop artist ever attempted to um, an opera? Well, I mean, okay. <laughs> you're 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 bringing up a very interesting point. Uh, I, there is certainly uh, examples of pop artists uh, writing operas. Um, I would say that in most attempts, it's it doesn't really it be, ends up being more of a hybrid you right. know, of of both forms. Um, and uh, this my my opera prima donna is 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 not a hybrid it's a it's a real opera the other one of the i think the only other person who i can really think of is uh, uh, the drummer from the police, Copeland. Stuart Copeland. Stuart yeah. Copeland. He actually yeah. writes very legitimate contemporary, uh, operas. Yeah. Um, uh, but aside from the two of us, I, 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 I don't know. I'm not, I'll, I, that's where I'm going to leave it. <laughs> because like what Pete Townsend did with a rock opera is yeah. something completely different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tommy. And I know that also, um, uh, you know, Paul McCartney has written some oratorios right. and stuff, but it's, uh, I don't know, this is, um, I've been assured that my attempt is, 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 is legitimate. Right. <laughs> By those in the know. Well, you are, you're married to. Uh, someone who sings that way. Right? No, 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 my husband. My husband worked at the opera. Oh, he, he worked. He worked in, in in Berlin at the Berlin State Opera. Right. At, in, in terms of um, administration, and and he and he now runs a, a very big uh, arts festival in Toronto, Canada, and and uh, he's worked a lot with Robert Wilson, the, right. the great theater uh, director. So so he's he's sort of on the other side of the uh, of the stage. But um, but I uh, yeah. But uh, but we we both of us are huge opera fanatics. And, and you grew time. up that no. way? No. My dad hates opera. Yeah. With a with a, with as much of a passion as I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my mother didn't know much about it per se. I mean, she knew a lot about tenors, great tenors. I mean, when she was a teenager and a kid, you know, tenors were even even from when I was a kid, like people like Pavarotti or you know, they were big stars. Yeah, those kind so, of people would come out and sing on TV. Yeah, it's something but, you rarely yeah. see. Yeah, no, anymore. I know. Back in her days, like, you know, Mario Lanza or, yeah. or uh, Ezio Pinza, for instance, was, yeah. was a big kind of popular star. So she knew about it from that perspective. But it was really when I got hooked at around the age of at around the age of thirteen, that uh, I brought her in, and she she came with me on that journey. She 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 loved. Opera. Then she uh, for those who don't know, Rufus comes from such a musical family. Uh, the Christmas shows yes. that you guys do in New York, where everybody is just about related. <laughs> Some of the greatest shows, by the way, I've ever seen oh, in my you. life. Thank um, you. Uh, that That's was so the first time I ever saw Justin Vivian Bond. Yes, you turned me on yes, too. Yes, sadly we're not we're not doing them in New York this year. We're actually only doing them in Montreal, but early uh, on on December fifth and sixth, I yeah. think. Um, but we're doing them because we're also shooting them for television for the CBC. Is that right? So, so we're capturing right. it up in Canada. So so we we can't do it in New York. Well, we have Canadian listeners as well. Okay. Is there? Uh, uh, who do you have on the show? Uh, we have well, we have Emmy Lou Harris. That's great. Uh, we I have yeah. uh, Kid Koala. We have Robert Charlebois, who's an yeah. amazing French Canadian legend, and uh, we have Teddy Thompson. Um, 
Um, we did. We, Laura Anderson w- would have come, but but she had to cancel sadly. But um, but yeah. So well, there's a bunch of us. <laughs> I, I yeah. I saw Laurie come out and destroy yeah. these things. And then one that I think it was a town of Lou just plugs yeah. in. Lou Reed yeah. plugs, <laughs> just makes it a whole nother. It's an amazing fun it's an night. Operatic. Yeah. It's an opera. It's an opera in, in, its, yeah. in its own right. <laughs> but that's really, kind of the way you grew up, surrounded by that. Being, going on at your house, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my mom, uh, and my, and my aunt, Kate and I went and I should plug, uh, my mother sadly passed away, yeah. uh, five years ago from a rare form of cancer called sarcoma. But anyways, her sister Anna, uh, and my other aunt Jane are, have just released a book called, um, Mountain City Girls, which is all about their childhood in Canada and, uh, in Quebec. And it's very much, um, it explains the whole, situation of what 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 in turn my sister Martha and I grew up with which was yes there was a lot of music all the time and uh it was highly uh I wouldn't say highly competitive but it was definitely at a certain level where you had to kind of, when you had to really um deliver the goods in a in a in a concise manner <laughs> was it hard to stand out then because everyone was so musical i mean you said when you were 13 you discovered opera was yeah. it hard to get well, your own uh, well, space uh, well opera for me was definitely uh, I, I think one of the reasons I, I was so drawn to it w- was because I knew immediately that it could be my own little area right. that that nobody else in my family was uh, was was carving out. I mean, my sister was really into Leonard Cohen at that time. My mother was more of a folky, you know, she liked Bob Dylan and and Pete Seeger and stuff. So so opera was 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 definitely. My dad was very to jazz. So it was, it, yeah, it was my it was my. Um, my uh, fortress of sorts. <laughs> but I, 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 I've seen these shows. Rufus grew up like me, surrounded by women who love him. Yeah. Because <laughs> I saw the way all those women would look at you when you were coming out. And I'm like, of course he has confidence. <laughs> no, I grew up in a, in a highly matriarchal system. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm all the better for it. I also think, you know, obviously you're this natural entertainer, but to me, you're one of the greatest songwriters today. Oh, thank you. But that's a completely different set of chops, right? Yeah. Well, for me, let's say that, uh, I mean, I, I have definitely uh, infused my songwriting with a kind of operatic, um, ingredient uh Mm -hmm. it's one of the ingredients but 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 i think in the end of the day a great song is a great song and i mean and and if you and certainly being i mean i i'm i'm i was born in the united states and brought up in canada but uh but but if one thinks of you know the american uh, you know being an american and an american musician songwriting to me comes as as uh, it's the it's the it's it's the opera of america right (laughs) you know and and so you have to kind of uh, measure your work, uh, next to people like Gershwin or Bob Dylan or people like yeah. that as opposed to, you know, Verdi and Puccini. So it's, so it's, um, yeah, you have to have a different mindset with songs. And everyone so. writes songs differently. There's no kind of book of here's how you write yeah. songs. No, there isn't. But I think that there's a kind of, I think the thing with songwriting, uh, specifically, and, and, and this, my dad is actually very, very, um, adept at, and my mother was as well, is just the importance of lyrics. I mean, lyrics are, right. are, are arguably more, more important than the music in terms of songs. I mean, yes, the melody will carry it, certainly, but, but it's what the words are saying that, uh, that kind of, Gets under your skin. Almost. Well, that's when we decide whether it's an important yeah, piece of work yeah, or not. Yeah. So that's the, the thing that you could have a catchy pop tune that is, you know, oh, this is adorable and fun. But then John Lennon thought, you know, have them think while they're yeah, doing yeah, this. Yeah, 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 and yeah. it suddenly becomes. No, it's, it's, it's lethal. <laughs> yeah, it is lethal. Um, but it's always, it's always an amazing trick to me because, you know, you wonder if there's, you're just born with so many songs in you yeah. or, you know. Yeah. Well, I found it's funny because I, when I started out writing songs mostly, um, I knew that I, especially after I went to music school and failed every one of my courses, I knew, oh, I better go into songwriting <laughs> sort of the family business but um and, and i had been working mostly on songs anyways that's mm-hmm. where i failed because i didn't want to do scales i wanted to write you know choruses and stuff so so i did that and i worked very hard uh for a very long time hours and hours and hours and uh 
and did that. And now it is about maybe more because of that, of that base and that kind of, um, foundation that, uh, that I created, I was able to, it, it does come a lot easier to me now, songwriting. Yeah. And it is about m- what's more, what, 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 what hits me immediately. And, and, and I have, I have sort of the receptors to, to deal with it, but I miss a bit of that, you know, strife is in right. terms of writing. Uh, and, and that's what's great about opera for me now is that I can, once you go into c- composing and orchestration and, and dealing with these characters, you have, you're right. You got to write, get right back in there into the sure. trenches and be, and, and, you know, and really sweat. So you uh, want the struggle. Yeah. You, you want, want this, it. Yeah. Yeah. All, like any, you know, human being crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, there are, you've got songs that for me are like cinema, you know, um, uh, the art teacher for me could be turned into a movie uh. <laughs> tomorrow. You know what I mean? That's, a good idea. That's everything <laughs> is laid out where you're visually making pictures yeah. as you're listening yeah. to this music. Yeah. Well, I was, I went to art school too for a while and I think there was, there is, there always has been a common, um, uh, connection between the visual and, uh, and the song, you have to, you have to be illustrated yeah. for sure. But do you think even being raised in Montreal changes the way that you write as opposed to if you grew up somewhere else? Uh, well, I, Montreal is, in my opinion, one of the great kind of bohemian mirages <laughs> yeah. in the war, uh, that ever existed. I mean, I mean, it's kind of this, Ice Palace, you know, up north, which it, at, at times it can be the dullest city on earth, but then that the, you catch these glimpses of this really, really unusual, you know, Parisian, uh, I mean, speaking of Paris and how sad it is today, but this sort of French, yeah. um, fortress, you know, uh, uh, up, up in the north. And then, then, and then, and, and also with like a great Jewish, uh, history, yeah. you know, with people like Leonard Cohen and so forth. So it's, so it's, so it has this, this kind of, it's, it's like a mirage mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. And, uh, and it was a great place to grow up writing songs. And, you know, my, my other sister, Lucy Wainwright Roach, whose mother is, uh, Suzy Roach from yeah. the Roaches, she grew up in New York. And, um, and I think that's great too, but I always felt it must be hard to grow up here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, Cause everything is just so real. Oh, this is the greatest work of art. Yeah. This is the most amazing building you've ever seen. These, these are the fastest, you know, trains, uh, uh, I mean, I'm talking subway trains, <laughs> I'm not talking Amtrak, <laughs> but in Montreal, it is a little more, more of a dream. Well, I, nice. I love, um. The people of Quebec are so stubborn about keeping their heritage yes, yes. that it's kind of wonderful. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they could assimilate in one generation. No, it could have could, happened could, at any time. And they, yeah, they just hold on. Yeah. So when you go in for a cup of yeah. coffee, they first address you in French yeah. and then yeah. English. And hence my sister and I have to, we do speak French because yeah. by law, especially in the seventies when we were growing up there, it was, it was, uh, it was illegal to speak English. It's amazing. <laughs> which is yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, Leonard Cohen is somebody, I guess, that you grew up knowing about. I mean, I knew about him. Yeah. Um, as I said before, actually, my sister was, was a, was a big Leonard, was yeah. the big Leonard Cohen fan when we were kids. Um, but I, I knew of him and then later I, I met his, his children and, uh, yeah, so. I think that is, you know, that kind of high watermark is always great to somebody to look to. Yes, you know? yes, yes. Uh, whether it's him or, or Dylan or, or whoever, that you have these people that you're like, oh wow, okay, so this is what every song yes, is yes, going to be yes, compared yes. with. Yeah, yeah, and, and that I very much got from my parents because they, they were, they were, uh, you know, in the running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in terms of the song, writing situation and yet from so come from so different places that you wonder how these two people yeah. ever even got together yeah, yeah. well they were very, they were very opposite in a yeah. lot of ways which i think probably explains the the attraction you know my well, dad was a very episcopalian waspy uh uh angry young man mm. uh angry young man busting up the country club and then my mother was this sort of backwoods catholic Irish, you know, uh, witchy. And yet always yeah. seemed to be two inches yeah. off the ground yeah. to me. Yeah. Every yeah. time I would see her, I'm just like, <laughs> you, well, you talk about swooning when you saw someone yeah. with their art. She's yeah, just no, she was beautiful. She was amazing. Um, the opera you 
are taking around the world yes, as yes. well. Yeah, well, what we've done is that, I mean, uh, as with opera, you know, you can't just expect theaters to mount productions of your of those works. That yeah. that, that takes way too long to. Uh, eventually, that will happen. I'm yeah. hoping uh, as 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 the as the piece seeps in. But in the meantime, I did want people to hear it, so I created a concert. Where for the first half we do about an hour's worth of the opera, the main scenes with three singers, and then we have a wonderful film by the artist uh, Francesco Vizzoli, with, featuring Cindy Sherman, mm-hmm. dressed up in Maria Callas costumes. It's just a great, it's a multimedia operatic bonanza. So we do that in the first half, and then the second half I come out and I sing with the orchestra, um, so a lot of my old material. Um, old stuff, new stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and we're doing it in amazing venues. We're doing it in Lisbon, uh, around Thanksgiving, around the 28th, 29th. And then I'm doing it in Buenos Aires at the Opera House there in February, which is really the most beautiful Opera House in the world. And we're doing it in Hong Kong and there's other places. It should get to the United States too soon. You've always had this worldwide thing too, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, which is, somebody told me before that a lot of the pop music in France, the French people listen to comes from Montreal. Yeah. That those, those singers actually do better on the French charts. Yeah. Even. I mean, there's, I mean, there's a big, there's a big, um, tradition of, of, of very popular French Canadian singers. I think cause they're, you know, they're, they're certainly hungry to get <laughs> yeah. out of the cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess Montreal feels so connected. As yeah. Well, my everyone. sister's actually living there now, Martha. Mm-hmm. Um, she's back up in Montreal. I don't know how long she'll stay. She kept, she kept her house in Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, but we, I'm getting ready to go up there for, for Christmas and, and it's, 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 it'll always, it's a, it's a, it is, the, it's sort of like, you know, Superman. The, his what his fortress of solitude? His, yeah, yeah. It's, it's sort of Montreal for us. You feel like you could just be That's where the kryptonite is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the album is available prima donna. It's available in stores uh, now and online. RufusWainwright dot com for more information. Rufus, I just want to say again, thank you so much thank for you. all your music. It just thank you. It, it makes life better, and I appreciate it, my Thank friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll see you next time coming through. Okay. It's the Bennington Show on a Monday. Um, we just went down to the bathroom, and Adele is there getting a town hall. And to me, I just saw this shadow of Rufus Wainwright all over her. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That was- you, uh, uh, having Rufus walk into this room was like stunning to me that was so phenomenal and it was so great to you know it's it, his voice to hear his speaking voice you it's hear beautiful. his singing voice it's yeah. like hearing his singing voice like in a still way is right. it's beautiful and his presence is kind of mirrors the presence that he has when he's singing it's he was it was great to have him here phenomenal that was a very very exciting thing for me to me that's one of the greatest artists today yes here I am, and we sing exactly the same, which is a, <laughs> in this uniform, this pantsuit sort of thing, looking at the art teacher. God, he's amazing. You know what? I, the last time I saw him in town hall, right? So you're in this theater, and he comes out, and he's you know, a great piano player, singer, does this beautiful music, and then you start to hear this all around you. Just people quietly to themselves sobbing at yeah. these beautiful songs. I, the art teacher, which you were just singing, yeah. I make, I hear the intro to that song. I'm usually within the first 10 seconds, I'm already crying. Yeah. That song breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. Um, Sometime back, I I lost a friend of mine and didn't have any kind of emotional response to it, right? It was just like a, wow, that's a person I haven't seen in a long time, and that's that's shocking. That's bad. That's how I was acting. Right. You know, that's just, uh, that's awful. Oh, okay. You know? And then, like, a day or so later, I, I put on Rufus. And the song Poses comes in, which, by the way, has nothing to do with 
but it was just the chords, his voice, singing, which it just reminds you of life. And I just, all the emotion just hit for like three days. So I was just like, yeah, wrecked. But it was like this thing of somebody giving you a drug that let you expel this thing that you, you know, some kind of poison that was in you deep inside, you know? Um, I just think, I just think he's probably the greatest fucking songwriter and singer in the world. Well, Me and Elton John both said that, by the way. Two people who really understand popular music. Yes. One of us a little more than the other. <laughs> I don't want to say who, though. I'll say it, me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been Elton Ron, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but I didn't think of it. <laughs> um, but that's also one of the remarkable things about working at Sirius. Like, there's always different things that can annoy you and in your job. But then you just, you know, hear Chris say, uh, Rufus Wainwright is going to come in. It's crazy. Yes. It doesn't happen. No. On the, on, in this galaxy that we live in. And yet, and yet it does sometimes. Uh, Virginia Jones wrote to us, the roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. Sweet. Larry Young, because I'm happy when I can hear the joy in Ron's voice. Very rare for me to feel any joy. At all. That's what makes it so special. And uh, Millie Hatchett said, please set me up with your new BFF. Just tell him I'm a dude. Thank you. Let me tell you something. I believe I'm going out for a fish dinner tonight. Oh, wow. I thought the classic thing would be to have a sword. The <laughs> gentleman will have the brook trout. Yeah. <laughs> Dutch treat. <laughs> and by Dutch treat, can you lend me half of what the bill is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm um I'm uh writing a, an opera right now called The Drunk Centaur and it's based on a true story. Oh. Uh about a centaur who gets drunk every single day. <laughs> How drunk? I feel like the rest of my day uh is thrown off like we were I don't even remember where my head was before. I don't know. Rufus came in but uh I would imagine it was silly. Do you know Justin Vivian Bond? I do. Way? Obsessed. Love. B. B. Well, I, uh, so I went, I go to one of Rufus's Christmas shows, and this is when his mother was still alive. When she, when he said that she passed away five years ago, I couldn't believe it. And it was, you know, Laurie Anderson is there, and his sister, who, by the way, is sexy and great and and a fabulous singer, and his aunt is this fabulous... His aunt covered a fucking Queen Christmas song and just slayed the place. So he brings uh, Justin Vivian Bond out, who sings this song about how it's the season of love and all, but not exactly for her people. You know what I mean? Right. They're not included. And uh, this is uh, Carnegie Hall we're at, right? So it's a kind of a, you know, stuffy NPR audience. And I, I, hadn't, I wasn't familiar uh, with V's work. And when they were done, this explosion of people coming out of their seats. And this is a night when, you know, really... Giants were performing, but this song was like so shocking and from nowhere. And it was like those things. If you get the, I feel like going to Montreal this year to see it. I think maybe that's how we should spend Christmas. Oh, that would be fun. I would love to do that. That's actually a great idea. We'll talk tonight over fish. Okay. Discuss. Rufus, if we're going to hang out all the time, I think. <laughs> um, should we holiday together? <laughs> Should we Christmas? Should we holiday? And is Leonard Cohen coming over? You ever hear Rufus sing Hallelujah, the Leonard yes. Cohen song? So good. Ridiculous. Um, but um, that's the thing about people that are fans of, of him, like immediately like, like other people that are fans. So I told you like Jay Moore loves, loves Rufus, right? And then right away... Uh, you know, I, so I write to him from the, uh, um, 
like right after the show that I'd saw him and he's like, Nikki Cox is like, what are your exact favorite songs? What are the songs that, you know what I mean? And I had to go through it. It was great. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's one of those things. Like for Chris, it's people who do blue meth. That Heisenberg, bro. <laughs> he loves the Heisenberg. Yeah, he I thought it. it was fake. It's real. Oh, it's real. It is. I think it's chlorine. I no. think you're snorting meth and chlorine together. That chlorine speeds me the fuck up. You know, I wasn't around for the um, for the real glass stuff. You know what I mean? That was pretty me. I was more when it was called crank. And it was a real Nazi. <laughs> dirty, a little dirty. Yeah, a real dirty <laughs> Nazi fucking eat the inside of your mouth out. Insanity. Now they got down to science. Yeah, I, when when I heard that it'd come back in a big, big way and was like bigger than Coke, I'm like, what? What? Why? <laughs> Can't be. Well, it's cheaper. It makes you feel worse. That's the good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the cons. <laughs> yeah. Is there a downside? <laughs> Kids love it. Kids love everything. Oh, yeah. They have fun with it. Kids, kids love cough medicine. I don't give a shit. Oh, Scissor? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. In, in, that was uh, the mm. grossest thing ever. It's still going on. Over in Chicago, that's all they're doing is just sucking down uh, cough syrup, that uh, codeine cough syrup. Chirac? Yeah, Chirac. Over in Chirac, they love that and uh, Xanax. By the way, there's a movie coming out about that. Spike Stone it. You see a trailer? It looks awesome. Um, I, I, I go to, I think, everything I can by Spike. So I will be at that. I'll be there. I'll be in Chirac. Me, you, Spike. Jennifer Holy Hudson's Rufus. in it. and um, Samuel Jackson's like the narrator type. I forget the white dude who's in it. Somebody we like. Michael Rappaport? I said white dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. It's somebody that we know that has done the show before that we like a lot. They were in the trailer? Yeah, well, I saw, like, something on from E! or something like that. You know, they'd just be on the set. David Patrick Kelly? No. John Cusack. Thank you. I know. Ding, Jordan ding, 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 and he's from Chicago. And he played the part of Brian Wilson. <laughs> Forgot wow. about all that. Have, you guys didn't see this movie? Yeah. The Brian Wilson movie? Yeah, I saw it with you. Actually, in Chirac, he's going to reprise his role from High Fidelity, which is the weird part. <laughs> You tell me you're fucking right. Because see, that was a Chicago movie. That was funny because it was like a London book, but then a Chicago movie. And it made total sense. Like, you yeah. know. It, it, oh, yeah. You saw that uh, thing. Did you like him in that? Playing Brian Wilson? I did. Yeah. A lot of people were really turned up. I just rewatched it the other day. And I'm like, uh, first of all, A, he's great as Brian Wilson. And then the other young kid was Paul Dano, Paul yeah. Dano who's been on the show, too. But beyond that, I'm back to apologizing to what you know, I said to you guys the other day about Pet Sounds. I just want to get it out there. I just watch it, rewatching that movie. I'm like, I'm fucking putting Pet Sounds on right now. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Well, did you ever see the Wrecking Crew movie? Yes, I did. See Those that. guys loved Brian Wilson. Loved them. Thought yeah. he was a fucking genius. Thought he was the best producer ever to work with. We're just because crazy he got about them. Him. He understood them. I think better than just using, just using them as tools. You know. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah. And I think he probably valued their. But they also thought he was like his ideas and all were just like fucking massively great. Yeah. And like then you wonder if Brian Wilson would have kept his shit together, would the Beach Boys end up being? better or at least bigger than the Beatles. Better than the Beatles. I'll just fucking say better than the Beatles. It's kind of interesting, right? Because they they definitely had similar uh, storylines where they started off really poppy and they were doing right. something. And those songs up in front of and us. those songs were great for pop songs. You know, I mean, they're they're great pop songs. And then to know that that was like kind of dormant within him, that Pet Sounds when when it was released the way it it was from him. I think that absolutely, if if he um, had been able to be functioning uh, after that, I think it it easily. Or maybe been. that was the only thing he had. You know what I mean? Like you never know with that. Some people just do one marvelous piece of work, and maybe that was fucking pet sounds. Right. But I can't believe just the other day I'm like overrated. 
I don't know why I fucking said it. I guess I'm just so tired of seeing that number one or number two for fucking, you know, it's going on 50 years. There's yeah. a lot of people saying that also just say because it has been on previous lists and they haven't don't really appreciate it for the great album that it is. But uh, what's the name of that fucking uh, movie? Love and Mercy, right? Love and Mercy. Mm -hmm. And then you hear the song at the end when he's singing Love and Mercy and you're like, he's like a child. Even though he's an old man, he's like a child singing this song. Yes. It's fucking crazy. He's like uh, Daniel Johnston, really. He is. Absolutely. I thought when I first discovered Daniel Johnston, I thought of Brian Wilson. That I thought I felt like there's there's something really childlike. Mm -hmm. Like that um what is that called? The infant it's like child genius kind of Oh like, yeah, what's that called when a uh, Savant? Yeah. Like it, yeah, like idiot savant. But then there's like I thought there was like a child name for it. I don't, I can't remember. Petey, <laughs> Petey. He's yeah. a real Petey, just like Brian Wilson is. Child prodigy. I guess. I guess that's where. I'm I mean, going don't get it. mad at me. I just don't know a lot of words. <laughs> I just wanted you to know, though. I just want you to understand. I'm not fucking Google Gail. The fuck? Then why does everyone call you Google Boy? Well, that's because of something I did once at a party. <laughs> it started as Gargle Boy. Uh, and then as the years went by, they just, you yeah, know. Yeah, the Google thing happened and yeah. then you went with it. All right, so this idiot savant child prodigy. Um, but then I'm like, you know, like, just in the same way I'm annoyed with that. Is there anyone better than the Beatles? Are we just fucking stuck saying that the Beatles are the best ever? I mean, could you at least look at the length of time that the Rolling Stones did what the Beatles did? Sure. I mean, you could at least double the time that they were kind of at their peak. You know, I'm going to go to 81. And stop it there. <laughs> I think we can all agree. Sure. You know, which was... There's a consensus. Yeah. <laughs> stop writing! <laughs> uh, well, Chris Stanley, I'm going to ask you, and I'll put it out there to the audience, and I don't think... You know, I think that people are just so locked into the Beatles that they wouldn't say that anyone is better than the Beatles. Not the precious Fab Four. Uh... 844-ROCK-GOD, 844-ROCK-GOD, who is better than the Beatles? 844-ROCK-GOD. Chris Stanley, I'm going to go to you. What do you got? Same era, came a little bit afterwards. I'm saying the who is better than the Beatles. Hmm. You would be alone? And that Really? They rock. Oh, my God. Did you just yell they, they rock? rock. They rock? But they rock, though. Oh, yeah, okay. sure. Oh, you've oh, changed my mind, sweaty. You must have <laughs> forgot about the rock. And they called me Gargle Boy? <laughs> and you bring out something like that? They dare call me Gargle Boy? Uh, yeah. Gargle Boy. <laughs> um, Cam says, that might be one of the only times I've heard Ron a little starstruck. Great interview. I'm not starstruck by the person. I'm starstruck by the talent. Yes. I will genuflect in front of creativity all the time. And plus, who knew that he was walking in like that? No, that's crazy. But I certainly would have dressed differently. <laughs> I would have dressed exactly like him in a long, beautiful sweater. <clears throat> These beautiful poses. Do I sing like him? Yeah. Oh, I couldn't even tell. I thought that he was playing the track. Queen says, Queen Elizabeth I always vote Queen as Queen better than the Beatles. I didn't know that that's where she got her name. No. <laughs> she is an Anglophile. Oh, gotcha. So she likes all things British, but she also loves Queen. Um, here is uh, JR in Kentucky. What do you got, JR? Uh, the Doors are better than the Beatles. I can't stand the Beatles. Jim. Nobody gives the Doors credit. They accomplished so much in the six or seven years that Jim Morrison had. They're so much better than the Beatles. So I'd well, say the Doors. First of all, there's one thing I do disagree that no one gives them credit. I mean, they are a band that was around together for 67 to what, 71? Yeah. And they're in conversations. There's movies. There's multiple books. There's releases. I don't know of anyone 
has gotten the run out of four years that the uh, door is dead. Yeah. Well, I, would say, I think they're so much better than the Beatles, though. I just think that short period of time, they did so much. I, you know, I know a lot of people who don't like the Doors at all. Uh, and then, by the way, when I did Opie's show, he said something about John Densmore. I'm like, what? what? A mean thing? Yeah, well, he was basically like John Densmore, who, I don't know, was trying to take the band to jazz or whatever. But jazz was always uh, part of yeah, what was going on. An element there. of what was going on. Um, I have one for me that I you can tell me if you think it is personal and that it is not actually true. Okay. I was going to say the band that I will no, listen the to. The band is amazing, but I will listen to the band. I will put on records of the band before I would say put on a Beatles record because maybe it's maybe that's because quantity of how much you can hear the Beatles in life walking, just moving through the world. You hear right. a lot of Beatles and maybe that's why it makes me less likely to put on a Beatles record. Um, Because it always feels like you you, just heard it. (laughs) You know what's funny? Uh, Now that you just brought that up, I tend to put on the early Beatles now rather than the post-1966 stuff. Yeah. I'll put on the really early stuff and I'll go, oh, fuck, these kids are great. You know what I mean? Like, I'll just literally think about the stuff that I went through fast as everyone became obsessed with, you know, the albums, but a lot of those early singles and just, you know, cover songs like, you know, that you're like, oh, man, they could really fucking sing. All right, let's go to the band. It's an incredible fucking group. Yeah. Also not together that long. You know what I mean? Um still by the way you run into music that you're like what this is the band because they right. recorded some really weird stuff because they were basically early 70s to like they didn't make it well, out they of were the like 70s. 60s to well they did the last fall well, somewhat 75 76 right so uh you know they were touring around with i think their first album came out in 69 maybe 68 though So it's not a long period of time when you, but you know, sometimes I think, is it the people who did it for a long period of time? Is that even more impressive? You know what I mean? Like if you look at somebody like you too, is that more impressive when you could sit around and do that for, it's like 35 fucking years now when the Beatles couldn't look at each other after you know, let's face it. They were fucking sick of each other pretty quick. Sergeant Pepper, <laughs> when, um, you know, Paul's like, let's pretend we're a band called Sergeant Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was just fucking glaring at him. <laughs> 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 you know, just what? <laughs> Why, dude? Um, Craig. Craig, what's up, buddy? Hey. Yeah. You two are a bunch of pussies. They canceled their live in Paris concert that was supposed to be on HBO. You know that? They did not cancel it. Okay. Fleetwood Mac rocks better than the Beatles. Now, dude, yeah, let's... there's nothing about you that I thought would have went to a Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm very I surprised. I thought we were going to be fucking hard rock or southern rock. <laughs> sure. Whatever. They're a bunch of pussies <laughs> when they backed out. Nothing was moving in Paris. True story. I actually made out with Stevie Nicks. Yeah, at fucking. The, at in... the Brendan Byrne Arena in front of the whole crowd on the Stevie Nicks 1986 tour. Jumped on stage, no bullshit. Dude, you're like a fucking, like a retard that knows how to use a phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's he acts like I'm his friend. It's just and he's fucking talking to me in a bar. I have no idea who you are. Never going to believe it, dude. Made out with Stevie Nicks. <laughs> I don't, so. <laughs> no. Everything about you seems like a lie. She just pulled a dude out of the and then, bro. And then here's another thing. When you fucking point out to a person... Uh, you two didn't get afraid and canceled their no. tour. And then it means nothing to them that they were that fucking wrong. Right. You know? <laughs> that means nothing. They keep steamrolling along <laughs> into their Fleetwood Mac fucking thing. Anyway, Fleetwood Mac rock. So Fleetwood Mac, which is kind of cheating since there's like three or four Fleetwood Macs. Versions yeah. of that band, yeah. Um, I know in the 70s, there for a while, it was as big as you can get. It was, as we called it, Fleetwood Mania. (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
Let's go over to Rob in Alabama. Rob. Yeah, Led Zeppelin. Dude, we're trying to have a serious conversation now. <laughs> we can't. No joke. Seriously, on, we now. can't fucking do this if you're not going to. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> May have been Willie Dixon songs both of They ripped off Tolkien. Uh, that was your big, and there's a million people that said that, that they ripped off, but. But they were actually just putting, just throwing Sauron randomly in the songs. I just have a problem with Wizard Rock. I really do. <laughs> Is it that you don't wizard- like wizardry in general? Or? That's part of it, but I really hate it with rock. <laughs> what about <laughs> the Washington Wizards? They're the Washington Bullets, my friend. Oh. And any other name is a lie. <laughs> um. By the way, Adele is not that big. She's not that large. She's not. Mm-mm. It's Hollywood pushing their bullshit on people. <laughs> you know what? what? Chris are calls you it Hollywood. Seriously. <laughs> seriously, are you going to be a guy we can't talk with? <laughs> That's of like course, the why would thing. Hollywood push? How did Hollywood fucking tie in? She's from London. Yeah, but Hollywood runs you know, the music industry, and it's, a, it's an umbrella term. It isn't, dude. Everything you're saying is... You've gotten this fucking weird character to you that it doesn't even make sense anymore. Um, it's uh one eight four four rock god one eight four four rock god. We're trying to have a fucking actual conversation with actual rock gods. Joey, I see you looking like you're ready to raise your your hand for something. I have one. Uh, Sly and the Family Stone. Oh. Interesting. You know what my about nickname that? for them is? What? The Black Beatles. Interesting. Um, Sly and the Family Stone, completely underrated. Let's fucking say that. Yeah, absolutely. Great fucking band. Great singles. Tons of singles. Are they better than the Beatles? They have one thing that the Beatles don't. So. Well, that's for sure. So. They do also have something that the Beach Boys had, where the head guy goes crazy. <laughs> Starts wandering off the stage. Like Lily during fucking Blazing Talk. 420 Blazing. <laughs> where she was just sitting on the other side. Lily? Chair. Lily? Huh? Where are you? You're on a show, Lily. <laughs> I had a nice short email from her saying that she loves your show. Oh, great. What? It really made, it really made <laughs> me laugh. Um, Sly and the Family Stone, I'm not even prepared for that. That one hit me out of nowhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised at the answer, but I like it. I, I like love where you're going. I like where you're going with that. I wish Ringo was here so I could bring it up to him. <laughs> you know who Ringo thinks is better than the Beatles? Who? Just the Beatles. Small Beatles. Small <laughs> Beatles. Um, Sean. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Um, I, I think nobody is really better than the Beatles just because of the cultural significance that they represented. Like, if I listen to my dad talk about the Shea Stadium and Beatle Boots, I just can't see any other band having that impact. What do you think? Not only that, but I will say this. The amount of classic rock performers that I've interviewed who brought up the Ed Sullivan Show and that changing their life. You know what I mean? Like, yep. literally, they were sitting there in their fucking stupid suburban pajamas. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Had never touched a guitar. No thought of it. And then saw this group. And let's face it, saw the girls screaming. Right. And thought, I'm calling my friends tomorrow. And we're starting a fucking band. And all those kids started bands before they knew how to play. It's like they just... Sat there and just kept beating on it, right. and some kids quit, and other kids went on the, you know, be in the East Street Band. But there's just tons of people, like everybody from that started bands, probably from '66 to 1980. You know what I mean? All those guys, they would have been um, anywhere from like 10, 11 to 14, 15 years old in 64 and those are the fucking guy i mean you hear from all of them yeah so many of the the answers too that we're gonna have is like what band is better than the beatles well the truth is most of them wouldn't exist without the beatles or couldn't exist the way that they exist without the beatles well here's one right here carl 
Hey, I got to say, ELO has to at least be in the running here. Because they sound like the Beatles. They could never be the Beatles. All they wanted to be is a band that sounded a lot like the Beatles, which, by the way, is a cool thing to do. Yeah, it's a good move. I like you. That would be another thing of bands that just came out of the thing, and you're like, oh, they remind me of the Beatles. (laughs) Beatles, Beatles. Which is like a great thing to do. You had a band that started sounding like the Beatles, and you're a kid, you're like, fuck, you guys are great. (laughs) Sound like the Beatles. (laughs) Like, look at even, like, the Turtles. You know they just wanted to be the Beatles. Sure. <laughs> Who are you fucking kidding? <laughs> Cheap trick. There was a band that wanted to sound and did sound like the Beatles. Succeeded. Yeah. Maybe even surpassed. I may now put Cheap Trick <laughs> as my better than the Beatles. They better get in the fucking Hall of Fame this year. If not, I'm heading to fucking Cleveland with a, a hatchet. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Well, I'll tell you one thing you won't do. You won't bury it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Until they're in. I don't know. <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> James. James. <laughs> Turn your radio down, James. <laughs> Big, okay, you're out. James. I got to get somebody on the phones in there. Uh, Joe. Joe. Hey, how you doing? Great. I'm going to go with uh, Steely Dan. Everybody remembers where they were when they saw Steely Dan <laughs> <laughs> on Don Kirshner's rock oh, concert. Oh, definitely. Yeah. First of all, I love Steely Dan, but they're not technically a band. You know what I mean? There's two dudes and studio musicians. <laughs> the studio musicians are all great, but it was a long time before, you know, that's not like, hey, we're a band. But the Beatles are an actual band. Yes, that's a real, <laughs> you're right. The Steely Dan is like a, a gathering of music. It's the Steely Dan Project. <laughs> that's what it would be. Steely Dan. There's nothing else you had to add to it. <laughs> Project. But, like, you don't say to guys in a band, okay, your part is gone. You know? <laughs> you're no longer needed. <laughs> <laughs> you're not needed. So you're not fired from the band. You're just not, you know, doing that temp work anymore. You're out of the project, is what I would say. Um... <laughs> Sean, Sean, what's up, buddy? Ron, how you doing? How Good. about the Hollies? It's a great fucking call. The Hollies. See, now the Hollies came together just like the Stones, who, by the way, you know, if anyone was going to be, but they weren't a band that saw the Beatles. You know what I mean? No, they, that, were, they were dudes that fucking saw the Everly Brothers and Buddy Holly and wanted to start their own band. And there's some really great music there. Yeah, absolutely. But since they didn't have that kick in that thing, um, you know, it, it never took it next level. It went off in different directions. So you didn't have that Sergeant Pepper of the Hollies. But there's a lot of fucking singles. Um, here's uh, Tim. Tim. It, it's Jim, but yeah. How about the Eagles, Ron? They uh, great success as a band, and then similar to the Beatles, they also had individual successes. Well, here's first of all, I think that's because there was a band that designed themselves to be the American Beatles. You know what I mean? Right. Like they went out, checked things out, and said, "How do you <laughs> do this? This is the way." How do you, you know? Beatles? How do you become the Beatles quickly? And make all the Beatle money. And get all the Beatle stuff going. It may be the greatest documentary in the world where those guys just show how fucking ruthless they are while making that sweet California sound. I know. I love that you like say that they're almost like they're almost broy, but then they've they've got that chill vibe <laughs> music that they're making. Um it's almost like they could have called their band Microsoft. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they're that deliberate. It's kind of amazing. Um, I know one thing. There's a band that can still fucking tour and draw people after all these years. Uh, Sean. Sean, what's up? Nirvana. Talk about a guy who sounds like John Lennon, too, right? Yeah. I mean, it does remind you of Plastic Ono Band stuff. Nirvana might have been the last band, you think, that kind of kicked the mainstream in the balls where everybody went, you know, what is this? 
Yeah, it certainly yeah. feels that way because you could always say that thing where, oh, when you're when you're in it, you can't really tell what's going to be the standout thing. But when Nirvana hit, I think it did feel that way in that moment. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I think you could tell that like the sound had changed and the look had changed and. Well, I I rem- I worked in radio then, and uh, RPD was screaming, "The sound isn't changing, the look isn't changing," and he was sweating. So you know what I mean, like, right. like he's like, because you were just like overnight. The program director was thinking, "Am I playing the wrong fucking music?" You know, <laughs> and what is this other music? How am I supposed to program this now? And I don't know whether that's, you know. <sighs> Flat wrote Clatu. All right, Clatu was, and then he also wrote this to me. Remember when I got handcuffed to Sly Stone? I will say this. <laughs> I remember when you told me you were handcuffed <laughs> to Sly Stone. I wasn't there. He says he was pulled off an airplane because um, his name was on some list, uh, and he gets fucking handcuffed to a dude. And it was fucking Sly. That's crazy. That was the guy he said. <laughs> insane. Oh, somebody's bringing some gifts from Texas for the show. Nice. Nice. Hope it's more mums. Oh, me, me too. too. That was the best. Any requests from Houston? No, I wouldn't know what to tell you to bring, Chris, from Houston. <laughs> Signed Astros jersey. <laughs> I'm also Love not it. sure if I'm even going to be there. I know these guys will, though. Yeah, you should be there, too, though. I'll be there. I'll be there. there. Right, what I'll about the Jackson 5, who were, like, younger than the Beatles? That's true. Baby Beatles. Baby Black Beatles. Done. There was a time where I thought nothing was fucking better than the Jackson 5. It's true, though. Yeah. I'm th- I mean, it's, Baby I'm, Michael. No, the time was this morning. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I could listen to ABC, like the record ABC. Yeah. I could listen to loop. Baby Michael all the time. Yeah. Me too. I Want You Back is like the fucking greatest song in the history of the world. I Want You Back. Baby Michael does the best cover of Doggin' Around by J- Jackie Wilson ever. It's so We're going to have a Baby Michael day. I know. Yes. I used to call him Little Michael. Now that you guys are with Baby Michael, I'm ready to... I like but it. One day, we'll just, here's what we'll do. We'll stay on for an hour past what we're supposed to do. And we'll just, because, <laughs> really, I think of Raw Dog as an early kind of Motown station. I like that. Um, all right. I just ran into somebody in the hall, Chris, about that interview that you told me that they were looking for over the yeah, weekend. Yeah. What was the name of the interview? Johnny Halliday. So it's a kind of stocky guy with a gray beard. Do you know him? Hmm. No. So he says to me, he's like, you know what I'm working on right now? I'm taking your interview, adding music to it, and it's going to play six times over the next two days. <laughs> okay, cool. I go, I got to tell you the truth. Um, you know, that was a guy who just walked in. I wasn't, I don't know how good the interview was. <laughs> I never thought about it all, and I, I don't know as much about French rock as I should. Supposedly, this guy's the French Elvis, right? Oh, really? Yeah, and he came in. It was fascinating to talk to him about how he was the French Elvis. Um, and I guess because we're all trying to give our love to Paris right now. Yeah. Paris, France. Yes, Paris, no, France. Not, not Paris, 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 Texas. Texas. <gasps> jinx. That, why is that a jinx instead of a good thing? I, well, okay. I just Please. like free cokes. By the way, cokes. Cokes. I mean, uh, free cokes. I had uh, a little bird shit on my uh, shoulder from when we were outside. And this is a new jacket. So I must be coming in the best luck time ever. That's terrific luck. That's amazing. I'm so jealous. That could have been my jacket. We were sitting so close together. No, here's the other weird thing. A human shit on me earlier, too. Bad luck. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> what it was? Because I paid for it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then that's good fortune. You didn't know why I was coming, huh, Joe? <laughs> no, I didn't. Did your brother get here yet? Yeah, he's here. Yeah. Chris hasn't said a word to me about it. No, hanging with it. Joe's bro right now in the booth. But you didn't even tell me he was coming in. Uh, Joe told me, but it slipped my mind. He... <sighs> okay, that's why you have to let other people know. Yeah, shit slips your mind. You're a producer. You're a great guy. 
Oh, thanks. Such a good, dude. terrible producer. You're oh. not a detail guy. You know what I mean? Okay. You know what? Like producing is all detail work. Yeah, right? yeah, very fine details. So when something comes up, producers are always reminding people things that they agreed with. Yeah. Saving emails all the time. You never do any of that shit. I have an email account. I know that silly is your way of doing. And I love your silliness. I think it's great. I just wish I had someone else to be a producer. I am Joey. You're a bad detail guy, too, aren't you? No, I I read literally everything down. Do you read it again? Oh, no, I don't do that. He writes it on his leg. (laughs) He's transcribing the show in real time. (laughs) Uh, What's your brother's name? His name's John. Uh, Johnny. Johnny? Yeah. Johnny. Johnny. We're going to have him in in a little bit. Okay. Uh, Scott. Scott, what's up? Yes. Right yeah. here. Yeah. The Allman Brothers band from 69 to 72 when Dwayne was alive. Yeah, that's the problem. If Dwayne would have stayed alive, who would have known what they would have ended up doing? You know? But, yeah, but uh, listen, yeah. listen to the Fillmore. The Fillmore Reach, the new released albums, the Fillmore Deluxe set. Dude. And how do you pop stuff like that? You're fucking preaching to the choir. I remember the first time I fucking heard the film Maurice. I'm like, I just want to be these dudes. I want to just grow mutton chops and fucking travel around with people that drink whiskey and fucking just jam for a long periods of time. <laughs> I don't want to learn to play an instrument like that, no. but I want to do all the side shit. Um, Wayland. Hey, man, how about CCR? A lot of hits. Also, yeah, I mean, one after another, it's kind of like the Almond Brother deal. Though. It was short-lived with the original lineup. But, but Isn't it amazing how many of these bands are short-lived? Yeah. Uh, Chris, you brought up your favorite yeah. band earlier, Huey Lewis and the News. <laughs> you know? I can't get enough of that man. <laughs> or his this news. is it. <laughs> Please let me know. <laughs> I have one for you guys. Yeah. Would you count this? It had a Beatle in it, as well as Bob Dylan, Tom Petty. No? You want to count them? The Traveling Wilburys. Yeah, the Traveling Wilburys. We're Wilbur's. like a fun joke on the side yeah. for rich, older guys. <laughs> <laughs> and it was great. It was fun. I thought uh, super group bro didn't count. There was one fucking super group that people were calling the American Beatles, and it was also extremely short-lived. What was that? Let's see. Let's see who can guess. I'm going to go with Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. That's why you're the new producer. Oh, come oh, on. Right. God, God damn it. I was that band that. was so massive that they went around the country. This is when people were in, I don't even know if they were putting together proper rock tours. Just about the time that they put together proper rock tours. And they played racetracks. <laughs> they played fucking racetrack. That's fucking crazy. That's like hundreds of thousands. Like the yeah. racetrack is, is the biggest place we could put anything. I know. <laughs> I mean, even when it's races, it's fucking ridiculously big. <laughs> uh, they were massive, massive. Well, I would have said that also. Um, but you didn't. Congratulations, yeah. by the way, on your new position. Thank so. you, Gail. You are your technical position is boss of Chris. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and you know why, Chris? Why? Because you forgot to bring up Joe's brother was here. Could you give me a water now? <laughs> Two, because I want one too. A little ice. But there's Frederick again. He keeps walking by. All over the place. I guess he's selling this place. Oh shit! Oh, no, what's happening? Like, if he looks over here, let's just go like this with our legs. <laughs> <laughs> like he's staring right at us. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ch- Chavy? Yeah, Chavy. Chavy, okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. The Clash, man. The Clash. Well, if, maybe if we were in England or New York City. Those are the two places that seem like the Clash, there was really Clash mania. Oh, I was, I grew up in Minnesota and. Man, they were they were so new and different when I was growing up in the, here. Just the way they, it was a, a unique sound. They had the sex, they had the drugs. They yeah, they're badasses. The that was a really badass band. Well, I think my band would have been great if I would have had jo- Joe Strummer in it. 
him and Mick had a very John Paul uh, uh, dynamic as well because Paul would write all like the love songs and the popular songs. And then um, Joe would also would write all the. You know, he was the one that cared about the Sandinistas and whatnot. He was very political. Like, and then would disappear for long periods of time. Well, you know a lot of facts. Oh. Fun, fun facts there. Some nice. flash fun. I facts. love your facts. <laughs> uh, I didn't know you were a so lot flashy. of bands though. Do you think they purposely try to have a John and Paul in it? Because if you're not, gonna, you're either going to be a John and Paul or a Mick or Keith, Mick and Keith. You know, and I almost like those. You see them more as being John and Paul than Mick, or, Mick and Keith. Definitely, yeah. Definitely with the songwriting and the. Stones don't write songs. They write songs. I'm just saying that Mick loved. He, like he he wrote "Should I Stay or Should I Go" or "Train in Vain." All the uh, poppy songs. Right. Anything dealing with love that was uh, that was Mick writing it. So you see Paul as being a pussy and John being serious. Why is he laughing? I can never have a, a fucking conversation <laughs> with him. The fucking character. The character is everywhere. He's back just, on the perks. There's no way. Are, are, when the, when. When did the character take you over? Is there never any time for fucking serious talk? I thought being very serious. I got all these clash facts. It's but why great. are you you talking like the dude outside, the outside dude again? <laughs> um, all right. Somebody said that Frederick has a new show on Sirius. He's probably on what's his name's channel? Andy Cohen Radio. Yeah. Andy Talk. Aaron. Aaron, what's up, buddy? Hey, yeah. Me? I gotta say, Black Sabbath. Well, what was Ozzy's favorite band? Beatles. Beatles. Yeah, that's his favorite band. But I, I, I will tell you this: I don't think you could trace where Black Sabbath came from. You know what I mean? I think that's the fucking root of whatever tree went out there. And normally, with everyone, you can go, "Oh, I see." Because I think those guys did grow up listening to the Beatles and the Stones, but I don't know if you you could put on Ozzy and go, oh, sounds like the Beatles and Stones. Yeah, that's very true. There's I don't think that there's anything in there where you're like, oh, well, this is with, like yeah. what they were pulling from. To me, I remember uh, first time I heard Sabbath going, this sounds really scary. <laughs> this is from the devil. <laughs> yeah, this is very, very scary. <laughs> I was like, oh, this isn't music I should be hearing when I'm awake. I should be hearing this when I'm in a nightmare. Um, Scott. Scott, what's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. How you doing? Good. I have two, and I know one is really not a band, and he would still be around if he didn't get this compulsive disorder about peanut butter and bananas, and that's Elvis Presley. I think he was a bigger showstopper than the Beatles would ever be. Would better? Bigger showstopper, maybe. You could argue. I I think at that time, he was what America wanted. No, there was no doubt at that time. But he was certainly overtaken by the Beatles. And what we're saying now is no one's ever overtaken the Beatles. You know what I mean? I hear you. Like, people could go... Oh, the Beatles, this is like Elvis was, you know? There's sure. like little, but bigger, you know? And, but I don't know if anyone's ever been called better than the Beatles. I would give it to the Stones, because I think longevity matters. Yeah, you know? and, and if there ever seems to be a rival in conversation, that's the most frequent yeah. conversation. And I think they definitely had the fucking Stones beat until you got around 1968, 69, 70. And of course, the fucking Stones were kind of fucking peaking then. 71, 72, and the Beatles were gone. Yeah. Did they back down? That's what I'm fucking saying. Did they Ronda Rousey this thing <laughs> and fucking lay on their back <laughs> until the stones just kept pummeling them? They must have seen the stones coming. And the who. Jesus oh. Christ, dude. The who rocks. Right. Kyle, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, what about Philadelphia's own uh, Todd Rundgren? Well, if we're going to be honest, he's upper Derby zone. Uh, oh, okay. I love him. 
Love him, dude. He's the greatest. But I think he set out to be the Beatles with soul. You know what I mean? Like, I, the, the English invasion so much in Todd's stuff. Yeah. Uh, here's Steve. Steve, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Hey. Hey, uh, I just heard you talking about super groups. What about the uh, yard part? Yeah, sure are good. <laughs> sure are good. Are they the Beatles, though? Are no. they better than the Beatles? No. Spencer, what's up? Hey, guys. What's going on? I, I, I'm going to just go all out and say journey. Look, if we're not going to do this seriously, if we're all going to be Chris's new character. He doesn't want to joke about this stuff. Yeah. He wants us to be serious. Hey, seriously. I mean, Journey, it's a travesty they're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's one of the biggest. If they were in it, it would no longer be a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, would it? Oh, that's just that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> they could put a doggy young up oh. <laughs> it's terrible when somebody doesn't like Spencer your group Spencer the troll he held up what's that mean <laughs> I think I don't think he meant he, he, he was serious with the journey thing how could you possibly think journey's people better people love the journey they're beloved I mean people really um, I, I, I think it's pretty often people say that they love journey Yeah, they took people on a musical journey if you will <laughs> to themselves Perfectly named, then. Yeah. Remember their stupid albums were like Departure, Captured. You're like, stop it with this fucking shit. A lot of spaceships, too, right? It's like I don't know. Spaceships. They were like space bugs. Didn't Bo- Boston had spaceships? Yeah, that was yeah, the that Boston, was Boston record. Was the, yeah. Like, theme. Can I tell you something about Boston? They give me less than a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so I should have been a critic. <laughs> Two stars. Two? <laughs> What Out of a hundred, <laughs> what would I be doing with the extra? <laughs> the extra star. Yeah. This has one more star than expected. I'll just give it to a wizard, a true star. I right, why don't we break here? We're going to be back with your brother. Okay. The boy who cried with you on the Vikings. Yeah. Lost in yeah. 98. 1998. Wow. And you're smiling lately, right? Yep. We've... Mm-hmm. Uh, don't even. Yep, really happy about it. I'm very superstitious. Why? Are you planning, uh, why? Because the fucking Aaron Rodgers looked like he just took a giant shit. And yeah, knows what's happening? Yeah, you think he's hurt or it's a mental has, problem? Has to be hurt, and they're not saying it. Just like with this luck thing, where he was all banged up and they weren't saying anything, and now he's out. Same with uh, what's his name, Peyton. Peyton, yeah, he has uh, a numb foot. He's got a fucking <laughs> bad foot. Fucking coach Kubiak came out and was like, "Yeah, he told me he was in a lot of pain before the game. Probably shouldn't let him play." <laughs> That's on Probably me. Probably shouldn't let him play. Uh, this is obviously it for him. Yeah, it's over. It's done. Mm-hmm. Peyton is done. He retires after this season. But if you're the coach of that team, you try to hold them for a couple weeks because it looks like they're going to the playoffs. So why fuck around? He brought laughing instead of talking. <laughs> what I'm saying is not fucking humor to you. Oh. Why would you think that was humorous? The way you delivered it is made, me, made me laugh. It's fucking crazy, dude. I'm really getting nervous. Is it a perky thing? No perks. Perk free. Did you smoke fucking bud, as you call it? <laughs> Some of those dubs. But, he, but you're sweating like it's a perk thing. It's very warm in this room today. Plus, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I have farted a number of times in here. And that I makes you laugh? I wish you, wish you warm. weren't being okay. honest. It makes then. it warmer. No. I, that's not what I was looking for. And I wish I wouldn't have. All right, when we uh, come back, we're going to relive that missed field goal in 1998. I really don't that, want to do that. That made two boys <laughs> cry in their living room. Two young men. Your dad wasn't people. even there at the time? Uh, I think he might have been watching the game or in the kitchen or something. Yeah. He must have seen it, but he just <laughs> left after that missed field goal. So you, you've got these whole kind of fucking victimized memories that are just pieces. All right, we'll break. Right back. This is Bennington. We're all stars now. With the skull, bros. We're all stars now. With the skull, bros. But down, but down. All right. Skull, bros. It seems to be the latest craze. And this is people that go on to see Smoking with Chris and... You think of them as kind of like anonymous that they're out there. Anons, yeah. They're my scope bros. And they're fighting terrorism now, like anonymous is. Yeah, they are. 
They're going out there. Did you see Anonymous said that? Yeah, I'm just wondering what took them so long. I'm just or saying. What, like, what do they hope to do? Fucking. At the end of their message, they yeah. also say, oh, and we're better hackers than you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you are. But these guys are run- walking around in fucking deserts and making up. What are you going to do? Spam their fucking accounts? Their AOL account? They're going to hate that. What are you going to do? I'm all for anyone who can stop terrorism. I just don't know if fucking with their email is going to do it. Hacking their <laughs> Twitter it. account is going to be the way in. I didn't sign up for Travelocity. Um, I'm going crazy here. I'm trying to do two things at once. Uh, well, we're going to talk to your brother about that horrible day in 1998. When two young boys cried in the middle of their <laughs> room. Uh, but Nick in San Diego says he has a very similar story. Okay. Uh, Nick. Hey, buddy. Go ahead, buddy. Hey, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I feel like me and Joe and his brother are uh, connected. Okay. Uh, 19, in 1995, the Detroit Red Wings won the Stanley Cup Finals against your Philadelphia Flyers. And in the game deciding, or the series deciding game, the uh, Red Wings demolished, and me and my older sister just played a ring around the rosy for half an hour and celebrated and laughed and laughed and laughed. You're awful. <laughs> You're a bad person. That's and you cruel. know what? Bad things are going to happen to you, Nick. <laughs> you know, do you know there's such a thing as stomach cancer that gets given to bad people? Um, now, let me say this before we bring in your brother, Johnny. I get a uh, text from Flathead over the weekend that says his inside sources tell him that Charlie Sheen is the guy with AIDS and is frightened to, you know, let the world know. Moments ago, page six just broke the same story. Charlie Sheen to address all of these rumors. Is he going to do it on Twitter? Hashtag Tiger Blood. <laughs> oh. oh, no. So it's just HIV, which is... It's treatable these days, right? Imagine, yeah, you can manage it very People well. People live with it. Yeah. He said the reason why he didn't want to talk about it is because of all the different women that could sue him now. Right. His, his goddesses. <laughs> but could you sue somebody for having a disease? For not disclosing, perhaps. I think you could. I don't know. Fucking Joe got TB, you know, <laughs> and came into work. <laughs> and I don't know if we could sue him. <laughs> I'd punch him. I know he's, that much. He's a longer. <laughs> Let's find out, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I think you got it working in the mines, if anywhere. Black lung? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Black hole lung. Oh, Won't you come? Come? So when is he going to uh, talk about this? On Entertainment Tonight? I mean, where are we looking at this? Is he doing Colbert? I'm getting all the details. Good. Get to the deets. Yeah, give me the deets. I love the deets. It'll be Tuesday with a revealing sit-down with Matt Lauer on the, on the Today Show. Oh, uh, look who has the deets. Yeah. Oh, deep the producer. real executive producer. <laughs> Tell me again, Charlie, were you upset when you first heard? Did this come from your Tiger Blood lifestyle? <laughs> <laughs> you wish you hadn't raw dogged it so much <laughs> and wrapped that rascal? <laughs> Guess you're not hashtag winning so much anymore, Charlie. When you're with a prostitute, is it that important to empty your balls into her? Or could you have pulled it out, <laughs> jacked on her titties? We'll be right back with more. This is the Today Show. I don't think you're going to get the right interview on the Today Show. Charlie, are you going to sit there and tell me that you haven't had one penis in your ass? Because I'd rather think that's where it comes from. This is for me <laughs> and my own lifestyle. Because, you know, Matt Lauer's got his own fucking hound dog fucking rumors about him. Is that right? Oh, the, oh, yeah. These aren't our rumors. I don't know of it personally, but they pop up all the time on page six. Page six loves hammering him. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Let's introduce your brother, Joe. All right. This is my brother, Johnny. He is two years my elder, and we cried on 1998. <laughs> That's all he's known for? During the Vikings yeah. game. He's also visiting New York for the first time this weekend. Hasn't ever been out here. Is that right? How are you liking the city so far? I like it a lot. You and your brother, to me, I would call Junior Stangle Brothers. Because 
you're two guys dedicated to comedy. Yes. Yeah. And you're ready to find the next daytime variety show. Yeah, it's true. It's always absolutely. looking. Uh, so what if it, where, are you staying in Brooklyn with your brother or where are you staying? Yeah. Is he taking you out to all the hipster spots? All the hipster spots, all the tourist spots, and some other spots that I don't even know. How long are you staying in town for? I'm leaving after this. Did you get to see Adele? Yeah. Good. Nice. Pretty you cool. saw her in the hall, right? I did. She looked great, and she was so, she's a real deal kind of chick. Yeah. She's just like, thanks for having me. This was great. <laughs> she's That's just a pretty like, good impression. Like, yeah, that is not a bad impression. <laughs> Maybe Wednesday night we can do our impression contest. Oh. I know you got to tell. Do you got any more? You have one that you feel like you do well. Yes, I have a couple. Now, here's the problem. I think that I sometimes don't know the difference between an impression and then just parroting something from a movie. That's an. That's a, well, if you do it just like them, that's an impression. Because I have a big one that I've never done on the show before. Okay, and maybe I could I could debut live. <laughs> I got an impression I think is going to destroy, but. Is it in bad taste if I pull my eyes back like this? <laughs> I'm from, you know be. what I mean? It might I, be. I'm from a different time where that was okay. <laughs> no, I don't think it is. No, the weird thing is I taste. just didn't arrive th- there from here. I've been around a while. but So if I can't do it, I can't do it. No. Well, it's PC. Um, so, Chris, did you send that thing uh, to the editor and all for the after sh- after show situation? Yes, yes, I did. You're on top of it again. Didi, call me Didi. Yeah. All right, so, Johnny, tell us a little bit about your brother before we get back to the memory. What kind of kid was he? Was he cool? Okay. Was he not cool? What? I mean, he's always been the louder one and sure. the funnier one. Yeah. You know, really? I, I'm the monotone. It's hard to believe. Yeah, it, it <laughs> is kind of hard to believe, but he's got that funnier looking face, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, kind of. I don't know, he's got like a nose that bends down, almost like a runway that's about to fall off. Okay. But let me just say <laughs> this, cruel. you know, and I don't know if you're interested, you have any musical abilities? Me? Yeah. No. Because uh, a friend of mine is starting a Bare Naked Ladies tribute band, <laughs> and I think <laughs> if I'm working the phones correctly, and I believe I am, uh, so he was, the fu- he was a funny kid, because you're... I know on Periscope that your mom and dad said that he pissed in jars and left them in the basement. They did. Uh, they did. More than once, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. Yeah. I like to have a few now, drinks. does he do as well with the ladies as he tells us he does? Probably not. No. You think he lies? Oh! A little bit. Has his, was his heart ever broken as a young person? If, he, if it was, he didn't tell me. Mm. Johnny, you don't have to embarrass me. You can tell them what I did this weekend, too. Um, <laughs> three women? Okay. Why, why are you lying? Okay. I know, I, I'm trying to help because I just knocked down his ego. I'm trying to bring it back up. <laughs> Thank you. That's what, sweet. What did you do this weekend? Uh, well, no, I, I let him sleep in my bed because I didn't have, I, I was sleeping in someone else's bed. I'll say that much. A guy's? Yeah. The, the other no, guys was, you live with? It's chicks. <laughs> cool. It's a hot chick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who was she? Let's see her Facebook page. Oh, Show it was uh, the roof, roof girl from uh, my neighbor. Oh, really? The one from the game. I like her. Rufio. Yeah. yeah. Rufio. Rufio. Oh, I Rufio. cried when Rufio died. Rufio. Uh, oh. Is that your impression you're going to be doing? Nope. It's not that. <laughs> Let me just tell you this about Adele, and I'm not making this up, and I hope I'm not. I saw what she had for her dressing room oh. to snack on, and it was, and maybe we don't understand it in this country, it was buttered ham sandwiches. What? Ugh. And I know. I don't, we don't have buttered ham sandwiches here. Are we Man. talking that the butter is the condiment of the sandwich? Yes. It's just oh. a flat ham sandwich, and there was butter on it, <laughs> and it came up in a plate, and then there was also Smarties and, I believe, lollipops. Ooh. And it was, she, and the person who did the tray for her, so this is the easiest person I've ever worked for. And I'm like, oh, I guess that's like a, an English thing. You know what I mean? And everybody has sandwiches in their green room. But we never have buttered ham. No, that's not even a sandwich I knew existed. That's not one I would want to eat. Did, did there seem to be anything else on it? Did there seem to be cheese, lettuce, ham, tomato? butter, bread. <laughs> that was the whole thing. That's bizarre. All right, let's go back to 1998. <laughs> um, and it was uh, 
uh, it was an unbelievable team. This was a fabulous team. The Vikings, they went 15 and 1 and then barely even lost that one game, right? Yeah. Wasn't it that came, even... came down to the last field goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this was a team that was as good as any team in the history of football. Yeah. There you are watching them play the shitty Falcons who went on to embarrass a nation in the Super Bowl. <laughs> it comes down to that field goal. And then you say to your brother, don't worry. He's never missed a field goal the whole year. Is that true? That is true. <laughs> yeah. That is 100% true. Now, both of you are standing there, staring, <laughs> standing in front of the TV yep. set, expecting a win. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, he guaranteed it to me at that moment. So I, I was. I did. I just. Was it wide right or wide left? Or no, left. No. Wide left. Yeah. It was left. Man. I can still see it. And at that moment, <laughs> you both just looked at each other or were you looking at TV and started crying? Oh, if I, I can't remember if I looked at him or he looked at me because my eyes were so filled with tears at that point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my nose And it was bleeding. hard crying, right? It was like, ah. Oh, I was gross, the ugly yeah. face, the bloody nose. Where was your dad at this time? I don't even remember. See, neither one of you remember where your just dad is. remember that you're beside each other. Yeah, I mean, this yeah. is the time, first of all, that you did. Was, hey, guys been a great year you know what i mean this was uh a really you know we didn't get everything we want but we had a wonderful year yeah but he wasn't there for you he wasn't there now nope. who do you think shed the first tear because that happens with siblings you look at your sibling and you see that the other one's crying it makes you cry i remember this it was it was johnny right here and then i looked at him and i saw how sad he was and that made me really sad i remember it a different way really i remember you crying first I mean, yeah, the point is, one of us cried, the other started crying, and we don't know who exactly. But It's like, it's like twin speak tears. Mm. Yeah. By the way, here is Flathead. You can see it says Saturday, uh, the text to me, and see what it says there. It says, hey, bro, spoiler alert. Two days heads up. My intel tells me announcement on Monday, Charlie Sheen, HIV positive, no bull. (laughs) (laughs) I'm really mad that we got to wait to the Today Show, though. Sucks. I just want Charlie Sheen to just just pop open like he should just pop a scope and just tell everyone. I can't believe it was Charlie Sheen. And I was completely wrong with Kiefer Sutherland. If I I want to issue an apology to Kiefer. if, If I told you who his intel was, you wouldn't even believe me. I would love to know. Can you can you divulge or? Yeah, but I'm just for you. Okay, not for the world. Cause... Do you even need to cross this name off? <laughs> no. okay. okay, I should take that off. That's nice fucking printing. I'm uh, I'm proud of myself for that printing. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, for me. I remember reading the, the initial story where they said like there's some you know there's there was like the blind item, and I was posting in the thread is Charlie Sheen, bro. But posting. I'm sure this is his intel, which is. An old friend. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It's an old friend of his who, I'll just say over the years, Flat has set some suitcases of stage clothes, too. That's gotcha. how they were marked. Stage clothes. <laughs> <That's> interesting. <laughs> Good. And then that person would walk up and down Malibu selling stage clothes <laughs> to other stars. <laughs> There's stars whose names that you wouldn't know. <laughs> People need stage clothes, you know? They love them. Is this the character, Chris? Or is this show? It's me. <laughs> how fa- how long before you guys bounce back from the Vikings loss that um, made you both cry? Uh, well, we were pretty good after that, so next se- the next season. But then it was two years later when the 2001 NFC Championship, we played the Giants and got blown out like 41 nothing, and that was another bad loss for us. Yeah. Surprise, or were you okay? I was okay. I went to my room, I put on my nine days record, and I just listened to that straight through. I just stared at a wall for about three hours. Yeah. yeah. Sports are terrible. They're terrible. I don't, know no why we like my heart. I don't know why we like them. There's no fun in my house this weekend. I guess not. And here's the bad thing. Big J wrote to me, and with the asshole Giants lose, it's not like we're not even out of it. I Why know. can't we just end this? Yes, that was the exact <laughs> sentiment. That was the exact sentiment. And- I mean, they're terrible, and they're one game back. And you're like, why? You're never going to beat Carolina. You're never going to beat fucking Phoenix. Yeah. Why are you still trying to get into the playoffs? 
Don't You're know. stupid. The only the, the Redskins, the only team that won that division. How the fuck did that happen? What? what? Makes no sense. It was a blowout. Well, because they were playing the fucking shitty Saints. How does Rob Rice still have a job? Why is that Ryan brother still working? Because the fucking people stink. He's not a bad fucking coach. But the people on that team stink. Fire they sale. stink like they're fucking... <laughs> Boy, I'm not going to say it. Okay. I was going to tie in. But like some kind of a swamp smell, and that's wrong. Um, Ryan, Strong Island. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. Hey, uh, that um, buttered ham sandwich thing is actually French, Parisian specifically, and surprisingly, it's really good. Now, here's the weird thing. Then they put mayo on fries? Uh, I think that's Bel- That's from Belgium. No. Belgium. The frogs but, do uh, that, too. They, yeah, they do that as well. But here's... You know what's funny? Uh, you guys had that woman on from that bakery the other day. And I've been looking for somewhere to get a buttered baguette with ham and cheese in the city forever because I had it when I was in France. And I went to the bakery that you guys were talking about, and they had it, and I was so happy. I just wanted to say How thanks. was it there? It was really good. Their, their food's really good. They do pizza, too. Yeah, she told us that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. Thanks for turning me on to it, guys. Uh, all right, bro. Thanks. I would say that that does sound pretty good if you were talking about a French baguette buttered maybe that like french like ham the way they do it however i think we're talking about sliced bread yeah. with deli ham i might blame that on our people though they i mean she might have come in and looked at it and go the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of place is this <laughs> it's what like, is this, this? Is disgusting what is this <laughs> um <laughs> this was written to me the milburn deli puts butter on all their sandwiches even on tuna. Buttered tuna? Huh. Yeah. Somebody else the other day told me that there was this thing of this place sells a sandwich that is tuna and egg salad together. What? And I literally gagged when I heard it. If it doesn't sound good, I don't well, we think know I want... We know it's not good. I have to try it, That's though. not a lot... Because you'll tr- you'll you, you love anything. tuna fish. Love he tuna, loves I tuna. love egg salad, too. Do you? Yeah, egg salad's great. He eats egg salad on crackers, isn't that the thing? It's a dip. I use it as a dip. <laughs> so good. Mm. What are now we I'm on here? some egg salad. Picture of a tuna it's and egg salad. salad. But that sandwich. looks like big pieces of tuna, right? Either that like or the that's fish. the the like more like a chopped egg situation. It's hard to tell. Either way, I'm not certain that that would be good. I'm, I could be wrong. I do like both of those things. I don't know if I would like to combine them. I know I wouldn't. I just assume kill myself as before I eat that. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> I would rather. I go like this. Um, I'll have the tuna and egg salad. Wait, do you have a noose? I'll just fucking Better yet. put it around my neck. You get two bus boys to pull me up in the air. Hold me until I'm dead. And then feed my body to dogs. Because I'd rather have that. <laughs> So this thing's getting serious between you and your neighbor, right? Um, Dude, let me tell you. Breaking up with your neighbor is like fucking breaking up with your wife. It's it can't not happen. good. I know have two different friends who made this mistake. Yeah. Um, One was dating her upstairs neighbor. They used to like get into each other's apartment via fire escape. <gasps> it was so cute until it went terribly wrong. And then it was like an awful living situation for both of them. Because anytime they wanted to bring someone over after they broke up, it was awkward. they always knew that when the other one was home, it was horrible. They hated it. Well, we're keeping it casual right now. Sure. Yeah, so. you are. I, but that until, doesn't mean she is. People say things, but their heart goes somewhere else. She's catching feelings, bro. Oh, no. Because you can't really be sure how Rufio really feels. It's true. You never know. I don't want to be the next Rufio. (laughs) Sometimes you have that, like, fucking ex-girlfriend who still has feelings, and you're, like, uh, you're fucking checking, like, if she's going to be at parties and shit. Like, if... Like you were checking on somebody that you owe money to. You're like, <laughs> let me just ask you something. <laughs> Off the top of your head. You know if Donna's going to be there or not? <laughs> <laughs> Tell her about this. She know about this. And, then, and then people are like, what? You you don't want to be around Donna? No, 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 no. I was just curious. Well, I was going to bring someone. <laughs> but I don't need fucking daggers staring in my fucking eyes. <laughs> now, what happened to your wonderful Periscope date? 
who was That's stunning. Her. That's her. That's, That's Rufio. Rufio. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, this is her. She's also my neighbor girl. I gotta say something, girl. You sound a little jealous, if anything. I, I didn't know, know this. Why don't, don't get that impression? Because feelings. you're probably in love with Joe. Whatever. I'm just saying, like, I'm just trying to help him. <laughs> if this was a rom I just don't think she's good enough for you because you're so great and just so cool. I know. Yeah, I mean, I'm funny. just keeping it casual. Can I just say something, Gail? Listen to yourself. What? You're in love with him. You're crazy. I got a man. I bet you're going to chase him down to the dock when he gets on that fucking submarine. <laughs> Joe! <laughs> Joe! He's in the fog. You can barely. He hears something. Yeah. <laughs> He's looking around before he steps in the submarine. Don't you know? It's always been you. We gotta go back, guys. <laughs> submarine. How did he hear me? Turn the submarine around. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. I have to go deeper. <laughs> Put the periscope up then. We're laying in the bottom of the New York Harbor for the next two years. It's an experiment for NASA. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot me out of the missiles. <laughs> All right, I'll aim towards Brooklyn. Who knows? You could be kilt. <laughs> yes, that's the way I say killed. I say kilt. <laughs> I was teased about it. So much that I joined the submarine corps to stay away from man and everything of its nature. <laughs> Before you get in there, Joe. Would you do me one favor? Sure. Kiss me deeply? No. Been down here for almost 15 minutes. <laughs> Submarines turn a man gay. Joe's popular in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves Joe. Yeah, everybody loves Joe. You got a cute fucking girlfriend there, Joe. Don't fucking ruin it because you have this homoerotic bond to your buddies. Yeah. I mean, maybe they'll ruin it for me. Yeah, of course. I'm sure all you guys ruin the relationships for each other. It's the way you can keep going. That's what bros do. That's what bros do. That's what that movie's about that we saw the other day. A bros try to stay together. Yeah. In my opinion, too long. Things have to end, Joe. Okay. Joe, just or break it off. For some guys, they don't. Oh, man. You're married to the sea, and the sea is your bro. <laughs> uh... I've gotten so much more out of that movie than I ever thought I did immediately after finishing it. Is that right? Yeah. I was actually thinking about that movie because I, I, again, had another guy that I grew up with die over the weekend. This one, of course, a little more famous. You know him as Don Vito. But Vince Margera was a guy that, in my younger crazy days, we used to run around together. And I just, the guy who introduced me to him, uh, Butch, died, what, six months ago? Yeah. So it's very, very weird. But see, all my, I have, uh, the weirdest thing is when you bury, when one of your friends die, it reminds you of all your other friends die. And I had so many friends die, like, when it was still tragic, you know what I mean? Where no one feels like the tragedy of this. They're just like, oh, okay, he partied and, you know. He, he he ran it hard, but uh, and of course of you know the trouble that he got in and all. But I was actually remembering the first time that I met him. So I'm with in this car with uh, Butch, and he's gone. I want to go over to this gas station. We're tra we're riding around instead of being in school. And Vince was you know years older than us, right? So he's like. Uh, Vince Marger is um, working at this gas station. I think he was going to give him free gas or something, right? Now, I knew Vince's brother, who the only one I've never seen show up on TV. Um, it's not Phil. It's another brother. Uh, and I, I'd climb a fucking tree right now if I thought he was coming after me. I mean, that, fuck, <laughs> that guy was unbelievable when he was a kid. But So we go to this gas station. And this memory really came back to me. And Vince had... Two jobs at the time. He worked at this Sunoco place and he drove around tuxes for after six tuxedos. So we come pulling up to this place and Vince has on these like work pants, like a blue dark khaki uh, pants 
that had oil and fucking dirt and shit on him and work boots. And then he was wearing an orange fluffy tuxedo shirt like a mariachi band. <laughs> like so he had taken the sun oil fucking pants and was just wearing this weird tuxedo shirt as he's working at a gas station without any sense of humor about it. Like it did not seem weird to him. So we get up and we're getting this gas and I remember him and Butch almost got in a fight because Vince claimed that he was on a diet and he was eating a pizza and drinking a Diet Pepsi. And it fucking infuriated Butchie. And he's like, why don't you just fucking have a real Pepsi? Why are you doing this? <laughs> you know, and these guys started going on it, ready to fucking fight. And I'm like, this is the funniest shit I've ever seen. Um, but I remember even th- that came to me. And now here's another time with those two fucking guys. And they were, they were good friends, but they were always in shit together. So one day... Uh, and it would have been, you know, sometime, uh, I guess in the early evening, late afternoon, early evening, those two guys were out and they were getting fucked up in Vince's van, right? And they were just traveling around, it was just the two of them. And they s- fucking felt like one of the tires was low. And they go into this place to get air in the tire. And the guy says, no, you can't get air in the tire unless you're a customer. And that's all these two fuckers needed to know. They start fucking bashing people. They're dropping people one after another. Guys are coming out of the fucking grease pit, and they're just fucking battling everyone over air in a, uh, in a tire, right? So one of the guys at the gas station either kicks the van, and fucking Vince loved his van, right? He had, a, like, a fucking party van. So And they're all drunked up. At the, I mean, annihilated drunk up, blackout drunk while they're doing this shit. Four or five o'clock in the afternoon. So they jump in the van and they just fucking go peeling out. They peel out of this gas station directly fucking head on into another car. Bam! <laughs> fucking guy is driving down the road. Van just comes out. Fucking annihilates them. And this is a fucking honest to God true story. So it fucking, they, the cops come, they take a picture. And it ends up in our local fucking paper. There's Butchie being fucking put in the back of a cop car. And you could see the fucking beer. It was either on top of the cop car <laughs> or the van that had been pulled out. So the next day, because, you know, this is pre-internet, so I didn't even fucking hear about it till like, the next morning in school. And they're like, uh, yeah, they're in this fucking huge trouble. They got a fucking DUI. They're fighting all these guys. And uh, I'm like, why? And they were like, well, they couldn't get any air. I'm like, well, they fucking choking? What do you, what, where's the story? Why can a human <laughs> being not get air? Why wouldn't they just breathe? I couldn't understand it was at a fucking gas station. So a couple hours later, it's like 11 o'clock in the afternoon. No one's in, we just all leave school. I'm at this girl's house, Gabrielle, and we're fucking just having a party in her house. And it was like, um, I don't know, it was like fucking the Wolf's Party in fucking Pulp Fiction. Just like <laughs> inappropriate times. There would just be giant parties. So we're all getting fucking whacked the fuck out. I'm pretty hammered. I'm like, I got to get to the bottom of this. You know, fucking newspapers laying there and shit. So I get the name. And there was only a couple of different hospitals they could be at. So I fucking called the hospitals. I asked for the guy's name that they hit in the accident. So... Uh, a dude fucking answers the phone. I'm like 16 or 17 at the time, right? I tell him, I never forget this. I said that I'm calling from Reporter Magazine. <laughs> 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 so I'm like, I go, I want to find out what happened yesterday. And the guy says, I don't know what happened. I'm fucking driving down the road. A fucking lunatic hits me dead on. So... You know, I'm asking him about the state of his injuries. He says he's okay. I fucking hang up the phone. I call Butchie. And I go, hey, dude. And he's like, I don't know if you heard. I go, yeah, I did hear. I said, I talked to the guy. And um, he says he's fine. He goes, he's fine. They're fucking letting on to my parents that this guy's dead. I go, no, he's fucking fine. He tells me he doesn't even have any broken bones or anything. He's like, the sons of bitches, they got me over here fucking 
Him and, and the cops in the family are trying to tell him that the fucking guy's dead just to freak him out. What? Yeah. So he's like, well, this has got to be good news if the fucking guy's alive. What's the problem? There's no problem at all. I swear to, this is how different fucking things are uh, than that. Neither one of those guys went to jail or it wasn't a big thing. Lost and it was a side. DUI driving uh, head on into another car. Those were fucking crazy times. <laughs> We've literally had a million of those fucking times. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, as the years went by, once my radio show in Florida hit, Vince would come down all the time. And this was pre... Uh, even Bam doing, you know, uh, Jackass. Jackass didn't even exist then. And v and Vince Don Vito would do all these crazy stunts on my show. I told you the other day that he had went into a coma there uh, um, and come out of it. But um, there was seriously a million of those stories. I remember one of the last times we were hanging out. So... My buddy Rap was down. They, both those guys came down together. And Vince was on a fucking tirade. Like, you could look at that Viva La Bam and say, oh, this character that he's great. It was literally just him. You know what I mean? And it was much more difficult to deal with when he got older than when he was a young guy. So Rap didn't want to be with him anymore, right? And we're, I don't know, we we're going out to a club afterwards. We were on the road with the Disciples. And uh, he's like, I go to fucking his room, uh, Rap's room, and he's like, come here. He goes, I'm trying to stay away from fucking Vince. He just, you know, he's fucking partying like a crazy person. He doesn't want it. And I'm like, just calm down. And Rap, another guy from my neighborhood, he has a fucking crazy temper, right? So he goes to open the door up. And these are fucking grown men at the time. He goes to open the door up, and this big meaty hand comes in. <laughs> <laughs> and he's trying to break his like a fucking horror movie and all he wants to do is party just wants to all the fucking um stuff that you know we were partying with and rap's taking the door and he's uh he's fucking slamming the door into fucking vince's wrist just slamming it kish, 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 kish. and fucking vince is not taking his thing out and he goes like this are you happy now rap you broke my fucking arm <laughs> now who's got the fucking basically the kibble it's basically saying who's got the kibble <laughs> um, <laughs> wild wild fucking days these uh guys and i brought this up before these guys that uh uh, I hung out with when I was a kid. And, you know, Butchie and, and Vince didn't even hang out with a lot of guys in my neighborhood. They were almost a, a different breed. But when you lose one again, it's like losing every guy that's gone. Um, you know, I think about losing Vince and losing Butchie in the same year. I think of Iceman and Danny Archdeacon and Bobby Baker. These fucking guys that form my personality, literally form my personality as much as my parents did. And when I do this show, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same way I talk. Hanging out in that van or, you know, going out to, uh, either Valley and partying or down to Wildwood. Um, and I, I actually, the morning that Vince passed away, I was thinking about him that morning cause I'm watching CBS, uh, Sunday morning and the, and the thing comes on for S Sylvester Stallone. Now all those guys fucking loved Sylvester Stallone. They were just fucking crazy about him. And we were at, uh, this biker bar, kind of a dive bar, Marcus Hook, uh, when, and you could be any age and drink in there, which was really helpful. <laughs> but um, when Stallone's movie, when Rocky won the fucking 
Oscar. It meant so much to those people. And we all jump in Vince's van, and Butch is one of them, and we fucking drive up, we eat at Pat's Steak, we run up the fucking uh, steps at 2 o'clock in the morning. The fact that people are still doing that this many years later just lets you know about how little those people have ever had to uh, cheer for. Um, so all those memories are always uh, going to be with me, and they have nothing to do with... You know, what he later became infamous for. I can't, I, I can honestly tell you there was never any performing with that dude. Um, and I think uh, um, as long as the last one of us is alive, we're always going to remember those fucking days of just wickedness and laughter. And there was just tons of it. So another one uh, is gone. So. They call him Don Vito, but I'll always remember him as Vinci, and uh, and I'll remember the young guy that I know, and all those guys that I hung out with that still mean so much to me this day. Still are part of me, whether I want them to be or not. They're still there. See you on the other side, kid.